imagine so. Finally, Darren, before we hand over for live commentary of this, I mean, this is the match I've been looking forward to. I know there's a load of Premier League football on Talk Sport. We've got Man United, Aston Villa coming up. Other than my team, Nottingham Forest, this morning against Newcastle, that's out of the way. This is the match I've been looking forward to throughout the last few days as Christmas has been happening. Where does this rank in terms of huge championship matches? Surely, with the two top sides, this is one of two, when they play each other again, matches of the season yeah for sure this is this is the top two going toe to toe playing very similar style of football like I, I mentioned earlier over two and a half goals averaging at Portman Road in the last nine games this is a match that live, may live up to all the hype that we've seen it before when it doesn't but at the moment you can hear behind me that the atmosphere is sensational they've got flames going around the pitch at the moment as the teams walk out I'm really looking forward to this two top teams going toe to toe I'm buzzing for it yeah well it's now the time is now right here right now as we just heard in the background with fat boy slim darren ambrose thank you very much ipswich haven't played leicester in the league since 2014 on that day the foxes won 3-0 however ipswich have a great record on boxing day they've only lost two of their last 10 let's find out as second go up against first here on efl live on talk sport 2 alongside former ipswich midfielder darren ambrose your match commentator tonight joe shannon thanks john good evening and season Greetings, everybody. The feast of Boxing Day football continues on the TalkSport network. And next stop, Portman Road, for arguably the game of the championship season so far. It's second against first here on TalkSport 2. And a huge night for both Ipswich Town and Leicester City, with the season now exactly halfway through. For Ipswich, the tantalising prospects of Premier League football for the first time in over two decades. But the gap between second and resurgent Southampton now in third has been cut to just four points and that has got Suffolk nerves growing leaders Leicester enjoy a six point cushion between themselves and Ipswich, Enzo Maresca's side are on track for an instant top flight return, can they further prove their credentials by getting something here tonight a sold out Portman Road, a chill in the air the floodlights on, not a spare seat to be had as we look down to the field of play from our commentary position right at the back of this three-tiered main stand with its low-slung roof and pillars in the way. Ipswich have Ladke in goal, Clark, Wolfenden, Burgess and Davis the back four, Morsi and Taylor holding, Burns, Chaplin and Harness behind Hurst up front. The Ipswich subs, Walton, Ladapo, Ball, Williams, Jackson, Hutchinson, Luongo, Broadhead and Tuan Sebi. And for Leicester City, Hermanson is the goalkeeper. Ricardo, Cody, Vestigard and Fass are the defenders. Ndidi, Winks and Jewsbury Hall in midfield. Fatawu and Mavididi, either side of Patson Dacca, who has been prolific over recent weeks. The Leicester subs, Stelarchik the goalkeeper, Justin, Doyle, Cassidy, Ianacho, Suter, Chowdhury, Cannon and Atgut. Former Ipswich winger Darren Ambrose is alongside me in the commentary box. Darren, quite simply, this is the one that we've all been waiting for. It certainly is. Just spoke, we just spoke about this with, with Johnny as well. Top two going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the division. The best two teams at the moment. The Leeds game for Ipswich was important because it was second versus third. This is one better, second versus first. And Ipswich have to bounce back, by the way, from the, the, the walloping that they took off Leeds. And then they, they got the draw against Norwich prior to that so they have to bounce back they'll know that they're normally good here under the lights I've worked here quite often this season they're normally good under the lights here and they've got um, experienced players Sammy Morsey is, is obviously taking the the, the the coin toss in the middle at the moment he's key for Ipswich Town well, this has been a feature of Ipswich Town in the Championship again this season. Just listen to the noise at Portman Road before, during and after matches. They've only lost three of their last 42 league games. And what a transformation it's been under Kieran McKenna, who was appointed as manager just over two years ago. I can see the former Manchester United first team coach down on the near side touchline, a steep drop to the touchline below. But what about the job Enzo Maresca has done since taking charge of Leicester City 2? In the championship, they simply don't get any bigger than this. Second against first, as the race for promotion to the Premier League really hots up. 
Ipswich against Leicester. The second half of the season getting underway for both clubs. It is live and exclusive on your home of the EFL. That is Talk Sport 2. On a day where we brought you eight commentaries from the Premier League and the Championship across the Talk Sport network. And it will be Ipswich to get us underway in blue and white, playing from left to right towards the Sir Alf Ramsey stand in the first half. And the game begins. Leicester City in their change kit. The orange shirts, white shorts and orange socks. And immediately they go long Ipswich deep into the Leicester half towards Leif Davis. Yannick Vestergaard is there to cut out his cross and it's steered upfield by Ricardo Pereira. Given away though by Abdul Fatawu. Won back by Chaplin in the middle midfield for Ipswich Town. Leicester recycled possession and it's cleared away by Fass. Up and over the halfway line, right footed. The left back for Leicester and it's swept out of play, and it's a throw to Ipswich Town, about 10 yards shy of the halfway line. Away to our left, the Sir Bobby Robson stand, that the end that Leicester City are attacking in the first half, playing from right to left, and of course, in the Premier League, there's a massive game tonight too, it's live over on Talk Sport at 8 o'clock, it's Manchester United against Aston Villa, make sure you download the Talk Sport app to be across all of the action, you can swipe between the two stations at your leisure. And what a day we've had in the Championship, Defeat for Leeds, a win for Southampton, so Darren Ambrose. Ipswich know the gap between them in second and the chasing pack is just four points. We've got a word from Darren in a moment, but here's Burns whipping it across from the right-hand side. Hurst didn't make the dynamic run into the six-shot box that maybe some would have expected from the former Leicester City striker, and it's out of play for a goal kick to Leicester away to our right-hand side. Ipswich nil, Leicester nil, 90 seconds gone. Good start by Ipswich, Good, great delivery into the box by by Wes Burns down the right-hand side here. And uh, Hurst in the middle didn't quite make up his mind whether to make the, the darting run to the near post or stay at the back post. And in the end, he did neither, and the ball just went out for a, for a goal kick. But it's been a dominant start in these opening uh, few minutes um, for Ipswich Town. And Ipswich continue to press high as Leicester continue with their policy of playing out from the back. They eventually go long with Ricardo up towards the halfway line. And Dakar, who couldn't quite get it under control, Four goals in his last four appearances for Patson Dacca, who's finally forced his way into this Leicester City side. Jamie Vardy, remember, out due to injury again. And it's well won back by Burns in the centre circle, and he'll roll it back to the feet of the goalkeeper, Václav Hladky. No sign of any early nerves from either team in particular, but it's Ipswich who've had most of the possession and the territory so far. The team's second in the championship, up against the league leaders, Ipswich nil, Leicester nil, and an early touch for Sam Morsey, the Ipswich captain, midway inside his own half of the field. Yeah, I said earlier on, Sam Morsey is key for, for Ipswich Town, as Harry Winks is for um, Leicester City. And it's brought down beautifully out of the air by Burns, gets it back from Hurst on the edge of the D. Burns couldn't control the return pass, intercepted by Fatawu with the pink boots on. He knocks it high up the middle, up towards Dakar. Dakar sandwiched in between two blue and white shirts. Referee Sam Barrett says no free kick. Good positive start this from Ipswich Town. Hurst with his back to goal, out wide left to Marcus Harness. Back it goes to Leif Davis, just inside opposition territory. Ipswich, who were thumped by Leeds United. Four goals to nil last weekend. But you wouldn't be able to tell, judging by the noise of the crowd in the early stages. And Burns has been put away down the right-hand side after a lofted pass from Harry Clark to find him. He's down by the dead ball line. He tries to pull it across. It's blocked by the first man, Wout Fass. And that'll be a corner to Ipswich in front of the Sir Ralph Ramsey stand. The first of the game so far, nil-nil on Talk Sport 2. You can already see what Ipswich are trying to do, trying to get Leif Davies down the left-hand side against Fatou. I'm really interested to see that. Fatou, a fantastic young talent, and Leif Davies in sensational form, apart from the Leeds match. And down this side, Wes Burns getting in over the top as well uh, from Bout Faces. You can already see what's going on with Ipswich. That's the game plan. Davies has got across to take the corner, and it comes left-footed into the near post, and Burns. Burns got the initial touch, and it deflected behind off Wilfred and Didi, and that will be a second corner in quick succession for Ipswich Town, who haven't won in their last two matches. They haven't gone three league games without a win all season so far. 
and it's nine wins from 11 at home in the championship this season for Ipswich Town, an outstanding record. Davis with another in swinging corner into the six yard box and it's headed wide by Burns at the near post. Nowhere near the target and a goal kick to Leicester City and their goalkeeper Mads Hermanson. I think that's half a chance, Joe, to be honest. When when you you're in the box and you get your head full on it, it's not he's not just had a little skim off the off his head, he's full on contact. You've got to be trying to hit the target there. And as you said, he was wayward. Interesting, and maybe we should keep an eye on Wes Burns v. Vout Fairs down the right-hand side. And like I said, Leif Davies versus Fatawu in the left-hand side. See who gets the uh, the upper hand, the left whips, which the right-hand side for Leicester. Leicester unbeaten in their last seven. They've won five in a row. Relegated from the Premier League, of course, last year, but seeking an instant return. And what a remarkable points tally they've achieved. 58 points from their 23 games. That is the standard that has been set, and 19 league wins in that time. Here is Fass, instantly recognisable with his curly hair, and the giant Vestergaard at the heart of the Leicester back line, and now when they're in possession, they go to a three, a risky ball out of defence by goalkeeper Hermanson, Connor Cody almost caught, Davis threatened to win it back, but he stumbled just as he tried to make the interception, and fortunately for, for Leicester, they're able to retain possession. Leicester doesn't even seem like they've got started in this match yet. It's early days, I know we're running into the sixth minute, but it's all it's been all Ipswich at the moment down the right and the left-hand side. Leicester just trying to get a foothold in the match now. We know how dangerous they can be once they do that. Harry Winks recycling um, pos possession all the time. 67% of possession for Ipswich so far. That is unlike Leicester. But here they come with Ndidi, down by the dead ball line, whipping in a high cross to the far post. Fatu has brought it down, he can't get the shot away. Marcus Harness tracking back for Ipswich will hook it clear, high towards their right-hand side, the near side of the field, out of play for a Leicester throw, deep inside opposition territory. Six gone on Talk Sport 2, Ipswich nil, Leicester nil, but great energy and tenacity about these early exchanges, and there's a problem here for Steffi Mavudidi, who is another Leicester player in super goal-scoring form, four goals in his last four appearances, he's gone down. The referee stopped the game to allow Mavididi, the number 10, the former Arsenal youth player, to get to his feet. And Fass will take another Leicester throw. This one's on their left-hand side and is level with the edge of the 18-yard box. Fass just looking for options. Leicester in their change kit tonight, the orange-coloured shirts, the peach-coloured shirts. And they win another throw down by the corner flag in front of the Sir Bobby Robson stand. He's got to hit it, Fatawu, the, the earlier chance. Indeed, he great ball into the box. Leif Davis misread the header at the back post. He's tried to bring it down. All he had to do was sweep it hit home with his left his, his left foot, his favoured left foot, it seems like. And for some reason, he was caught in two minds. Whether he thought Leif Day was going to get a touch, I don't know. But that, that's a big opportunity, that, for Leicester. A foul on Connor Chaplin on the edge of the penalty area. And Ipswich have a free kick. Darren Ambrose with us for commentary tonight. What would be a good result tonight for your former club, Ipswich, Darren? Uh, before the game, I was thinking maybe a draw. When we see the Leeds, um, the Leeds result, then Southampton walloping yeah. um, the, earlier on as Swansea. well, winning 5 0 against Swansea. Leicester have won it back half the pitch. Meanwhile, it's cut back towards Ndidi, edge of the box. He missed, kicked it. It's fallen for Mavadidi. Left hand into the penalty area, surrounded by two in blue. He couldn't get his shot away. Let off for Ipswich Town. It's come back to Ricardo, midway inside opposition territory. Lovely cross field ball to the right hand side, and Fatawu, who died. Darts in field, twisting and turning and trying to dart away from Davis. Oh, and he tried to whip it near post with his right foot and Latke was expecting a cross in the end. Fortunately for the goalkeeper, it flashed into the side netting. Couple of sights of goal now for Leicester City. Ipswich nil, Leicester nil, eight minutes on the clock. Yeah, Leicester certainly got back, got involved in this game now in the last three or four minutes. Um, Abadidi and Fatawu really causing Ipswich problems, having some chances as well. We said the Fatawu chance potentially should have shot and didn't but yeah going back to your question Joe I think a draw would have been a good result if it wasn't for the Southampton one but speaking to a few supporters outside the stadium they was saying no chance we've got to go for the win and it looks like that was, that's what Kieran McKenna is doing Fatu was born into the penalty area for Leicester but very calm defending from Harry Clark the Ipswich right back nobody around him simply chested the ball back to goalkeeper Ladke who was under no pressure whatsoever more live football tomorrow night on the TalkSport network. And indeed, you can only hear Premier League commentaries on the TalkSport network as well as today 
with Manchester United against Aston Villa still to come. We've got commentaries on the 27th and 28th. I'll tell you about those in a second. Mavadidi bursting forward into the box for Leicester, whips it across the face of goal, and Wolfenden was there to turn it behind for a corner in front of the goalkeeper, and Leicester have really got started in the game now as they seek the opener 0-0. Yeah, they certainly have. Ipswich causing themselves problem. The previous chance for Leicester was Jack Taylor losing possession in the middle of the field, and that chance there, Connor Chaplin giving away a sloppy pass, they're causing themselves problem at the moment, but Leicester are certainly in this game. Another corner, and they seem to be the team that's on top now. Well, Cody and Vestigada both forward, Daka lurking on the edge of the six-sharp box. And it'll be Steffi Mavadidi to take the corner, short to the corner of the penalty area, whipped in left-footed high by Jewsbury Hall, and the looping header over the top by Ndidi, who should have done better there. Not always a regular scorer in previous seasons for Leicester City, Wilfred Ndidi, though he's got four this campaign, and I think at least he should have hit the target, Darren Ambrose. Joe, that's a huge chance. We, we are right, The angle of that cross was right where we're sat, and he is on his own. He's, he's missed the defenders, he's on his own, and it was a poor header, it was poor connection, and he just put the ball over the bar with his head. I mean, that's a huge chance. That's the best chance of the game so far for me, indeed, and he should have done better. It's the Enzo Maresca, the Leicester boss on the near side touchline, arms behind his back, a disciple, of course, of Pep Guardiola, and Leicester have taken the championship by storm so far this season. The leaders away to the team in second spot, and it's nil-nil here at Ipswich at Portman Road. Mavadidi looking to scamper in field. He's tripped by Clark. That'll be a free kick to Leicester City. And Ipswich certainly started the game the brighter side in the first four or five minutes. But since then, Leicester have started to take control. Dangerous player, Mavadidi. Looks, looks on top form today. He has the Sfatou down the, uh, the other side for Leicester on the right-hand side. And I've pinpointed those two. Um, the right-hand side, Leif Davies and Fatou, as a key battle today, as long, along with Wes Burns and Bout Fest. So I'm uh, still interested to see who gets on top. I think whoever gets on top out of those two battles will win this match. We are your home of the EFL. The only place to hear exclusive EFL commentaries is the Talk Sport Network. Ball's been given away by the Leicester goalkeeper Hermanson under pressure. It's dropped to Burns right on edge of the penalty area. His early cross clatters off fast, and that's certainly gone out of play. And I think for an Ipswich throw, a couple of yards from the corner flag because Harry Clark. The right back has come forward to take it. Leif Davis has stayed on the opposite side. He usually takes the in-swinging corners. And it's Clark shaping up to take the throw, which is level with the edge of the six-yard box. Back it goes now to Wolfenden with the dyed blonde hair. On to Morsi. Little touch wide to the near side and Clark again. Clark crosses in. Hurst darted into the near post. It may have skimmed off the top of his forehead before rolling away and out of play for a Leicester City throw on the far side of the field in front of those 2,000 Leicester fans. Lovely ball in though and Hurst looking for a goal against his old club wasn't too far away it's been a really exciting dynamic start to this game maybe a bit of a surprise that it's still goalless another half chance as well there for Ipswich and Hurst as you said Joe this time made the right run to the near post good ball into the box Harry Clark and he just couldn't get connection if he did it's one of those that you try and skim the connection to the far corner and potentially it goes in but another half chance there for Ipswich been a great game already oh and Clark has given it away to Mavadidi inside the centre circle and Daka Daka racing forward he's now 30 yards out plenty back for Ipswich Daka goes wide towards Mavadidi good interception coming across by Clark to rectify the error but then Burns concedes possession sloppy bit of control winks in the middle of the Ipswich half middle of opposition territory that midfield men known for Leicester City, goes across to the right-hand side and Cody, Cody's high diagonal ball, deep towards the left-hand channel, Mavadidi can't reach it, a little too much on that high diagonal from Connor Cody, who hasn't played a lot of football this season, his Leicester debut was delayed by a foot injury, and that'll be a goal kick to Ipswich, away to our left-hand side, 13 minutes played in Suffolk on a chilly boxing day, boxing day evening and it's Ipswich nil, Leicester nil, they'll be underway at Old Trafford, any moment now for Manchester United against Aston Villa, that's live on Talk Sport. And then we're at Goodison tomorrow night for Everton against Manchester City. On Talk Sport 2, we'll bring you Chelsea against Crystal Palace and on the app, 
Brentford host Wolves. And then on the 28th of December, so two nights time, Brighton against Tottenham in the Premier League on Talk Sport 2 and Arsenal against West Ham on Talk Sport. High floated ball up the inside right hand channel for Ipswich is George Hurst. He lays it to the right hand side, does the front man to find the speedy winger Burns wearing number seven. Whips in a high left footed cross deep to the far post and the header is wide by Davis. It took a deflection on its way through off Ricardo. In fact, it was Fatu with an important touch tracking back for Leicester City and Ipswich win their third corner, nil nil. Absolutely fantastic defending at the back post by Fatu as Leif Davis was just going to head into an, an empty net he gets there in front the desire to get there in front of him and head it out for a corner brilliant defending by Fatou everybody back for Leicester delivered high out swinging by Davis headed away at the near post by Vestergaard it's come out to the edge of the box and it's smashed a long way over the top by Jack Taylor who can hit them from range and we've seen him hit them from range for Ipswich are plenty this season Prolific in his days at Peterborough United as well, but that was high into the stats. Yeah, couldn't quite get it set in time as the ball was headed clear off the corner. He tried to control it to give himself time, but it was just under his feet and tried the little half volley and just put it over the bar. But, I mean, if you're Leicester, you talk about Ipswich, what's a good result for Ipswich. Leicester, they could just play with freedom because they, even if they lose this, they're still three points clear at the table. It must be such a nice position that they found themselves in. Absolutely. Leicester could go nine clear of Ipswich tonight and maybe even more importantly, 13 clear of the chasing pack. Southampton in third after their thumping of Swansea. Leeds were beaten at Preston live on Talk Sport 2. Big win for Liverpool at Burnley in the 5.30 kickoff in the Premier League. Liverpool top after winning by two goals to nil at Turf Moor. That was on Talk Sport. Sheffield United 2, Luton 3, Bournemouth 3, Fulham 0, Newcastle 1, Nottingham Forest 3. The other results in the Premier League, all of those games were live on the Talk Sport network on this Boxing Day. Quarter of an hour gone here at Portman Road and nil nil it remains. Harry Clark will take a throw for Ipswich in their blue and white. Back he goes to Wolfenden, the number six, one of three players recalled to the starting lineup tonight. We saw a real thriller the last time Ipswich were in action here, that 2 2 draw in the East Anglian derby against Norwich City. Hurst with his back to goal can't control the ball up the middle from Wolfenden, and Hurst has gone down. And is he holding his right knee? Is there a problem here for George Hurst? The referee stopped the game and the physio is going to be called. Did he land awkwardly there, Darren Ambrose? Yeah, it seemed like the, the, it, maybe his hamstring or his hip. As, he play, as the ball was played forward, it was just out of reach and I see him stretching to get it. He did land awkwardly as well. Physio is on now and they're doing all the tests. It looks like they're doing tests for the hamstring or glute maybe, but... Remains to be seen. It looks like he's going to be OK. He's a, he's, a, he's a big, strong boy, so he pretty should be OK. Yeah, you're right. I think he was holding on to the glute, maybe, or the hamstring. Either way, he's getting some help from the physio. They're stretching that right leg. And what an opportunity for George Hurst tonight up against his old side. He joined on a permanent deal from Leicester in the summer after a really good loan spell last season. And what a season it was for Ipswich, promoted with 98 points back to the championship for the first time since 2019 and I guess as a player Darren does it does it add any extra motivation coming up against your old club yeah of course it does it shouldn't and it, honestly it certainly shouldn't but <laughs> Should it be does motivated I've, the same way it, every it, game it, you're absolutely right but for some reason it, particularly if it don't, didn't go too well at the previous club yeah yeah it definitely um, adds to the excitement of the match well we're still receiving some treatment here George Hurst on the halfway line and that allowed both sets of players to come over to the near side touchline and take on instructions and take on some water as well we're taking on water in the commentary box too and that's exactly what we should be doing in the stoppages in play and Hurst is still being treated and now he's being helped to his feet by the physio out on the halfway line and applause for George Hurst Ipswich who do have strikers on the bench in the shape of Caden Jackson and Freddie Ladapo and Nathan Broadhead, who's been in good goal-scoring form, although he did miss, despite scoring in the East Anglian derby, a couple of sitters as well. Hurst is holding the back of his right hamstring. Do you think he's going to be OK to carry I on? I don't know. He doesn't go down too easily yeah. um, off, off, often, so 
it, when he goes down, you know he's hurt. And he is he's still hobbling. He's on the sideline. He is up walking, which is good sign. But he is still holding that right hamstring. So he definitely overstretched as he got it. He's going to give it another try. Of course, he's against his former side, as we said. So it remains to be seen whether he can, he can run it off. It's hard to run off a hamstring issue. And that's what it looks to be. Temporarily down to 10, Ipswich Town. Ipswich nil, Leicester nil. We brought you Birmingham 1, Stoke 3 earlier in the Championship on Talk Sport 2. Wayne Rooney's Birmingham now just seven points above the Championship relegation zone. Still waiting for Hurst to come back on the field. Leicester in possession with Dewsbury Hall. Angles the ball out to the far side, the right, and Fatou in front of the cobbled stand. Here comes Hurst. Oh, he's Hurst, done. he's, he's going to have to come off here. He's just pulled his hamstring. The opportunity was there for him to try and carry on, and he's gone to ground. It's immediately got worse for Hurst, and this is a clear hamstring injury. He can't even stand up, and he's going to have to come off. Yeah, this is a worry. It's a worrying sign. He, he, I'd say he got, what, three or four yards back on the pitch, Joe. He was, wasn't even running on, really, and he's hobbled down. He's, he's collapsed to the floor once again. It's a definite hamstring problem, and I said it's, it's very difficult. Even a minor hamstring strain is difficult to run off, and I was watching the, the, the sidelines, and no one was really warming up at the time, so whether they thought, oh, he's going to be OK, but he certainly will not be continuing here. Well, what does Kieran McKenna do here as Hurst gets a standing ovation as he leaves the field? Everybody getting to their feet, packed all around us, the supporters in the main stand. And it might well be Caden Jackson who gets the call, but the opportunity is there for potentially Nathan Broadhead too. Nathan Broadhead, who has eight goals so far this season. Kieran McKenna's going to have to make a decision pretty quickly. His team are going to be temporarily down to 10 men with Hurst making the long walk towards the tunnel in the corner of the ground as we look at it and Caden Jackson is going to come on very shortly but Leicester have possession with the score still nil-nil the game has restarted and Ipswich playing with 10 at the moment hit up the middle towards Ndidi scrambled away by Wolfenden now Burns breaking towards the halfway line he's got runners left and right harness to the right so too is the captain Morsi Morsi keeps it in play on the near side channel Morsi drills in the low cross it's only half cleared they want handball to Ipswich inside the penalty area Vestergaard and Ricardo both took a swing at it there was a deflection inside the 18-yard box Referee waved away the appeals. There was a lot of players there. I didn't see if it come off a hand at all. And we're not getting replays up here, so we won't be able to see it. But there was definitely appeals from all the Ipswich players that were close by and the stand full of supporters. So remains to be seen. When we see the, the replay of that, they definitely appealed. Um, Caden Jackson still bouncing up and down, ready to come. And he's the ideal replacement for, for George Hurst. And he'll, he'll look to get in behind as opposed to come, come short. There's an energy about the game, but there's also quite a cagey feel to the game at the moment. Ricardo falls to the edge of the penalty area for Leicester. It could run left to Mavadidi. It does run left to Mavadidi. Tracking back is Burns. Good, diligent work by Burns. Mavadidi certainly found himself in good space inside the penalty area. The last touch was off the Leicester man. And confirmation of the Ipswich change. What a roar for Caden Jackson who comes onto the field. He has only scored two goals so far this season. And, of course, it's Hurst, who is injured, whose night is over early. And what a shame for him against his old club. Yeah, such a shame. Such a shame for Ipswich as well. He's key, uh, holding up the uh, possession upfield. But Caden Jackson, as I said, he'll look to get in behind. They'll know his strengths now. I think both his goals have come from him coming onto the pitch from a substitute position. So he'll, he'll definitely be looking to add to his three. But it's an intriguing view in here. Ipswich's most dangerous side is their right-hand side and Leicester's is their left-hand side and it's so intriguing to watch. Quite a contrast in the style of play of the two teams. Mavadidi attacking the edge of the 18-yard boxes. Trying to play a 1-2 with Dakar. Mavadidi tries to burst beyond two challenges. He half got past Wolfenden, not beyond Clark, though. Resolute in his determination to clear upfield. The sliced right-footed clearance goes out of play. Throw to Leicester, right in between the two bosses, Maresca and McKenna. The top two in the championship. Ipswich second and Leicester leading the way at the halfway stage of the season. Fass, cross field, left to right. Lovely sweeping ball through the dark night sky to find Cody. Cody drives into opposition territory. Gets the return ball from Keane and Dewsbury Hall. Dewsbury Hall wearing gloves tonight. It is pretty cold in Suffolk. Mackie goes to Vestergaard. Vestergaard, the giant centre-half, who's been a regular for Leicester this season. 
having been completely out of the picture last year, didn't play in the league at all. Crossfield, they go now to the left-hand side of Mavididi. Mavididi led with the edge of the 18-yard box, one-on-one -on -one with Clark, whips in a high right-footed cross, headed away by Burgess at the heart of the Ipswich back line. Still haven't really had a clear-cut chance in the game so far. We've had a couple of good half chances, but nothing clear-cut just yet, Darren Ambrose. Ipswich nil, Leicester nil, midway through the first half. Yeah, it's like a chess match at the moment. Everyone, the tactics are coming into play. We have had a half chance with Ndidi for Leicester, and George Hurst had a couple of chances when he was on. Nothing real, as you said, clear-cut. We're still waiting for that 24th minute in. It's, uh, it's two very, very good sides. Zaka has spun Burgess with ease. He's 25 yards out. He's right of centre. He's laid it to the left of Mavadidi. Again in acres of space. Curl is it! Oh, what a goal from Mavadidi! Wonderful curler into the far corner. Placed to perfection. And it's five goals in five for Steffi Mavadidi. And at the moment, there's no stopping the leaders, Leicester City. Wonderful finish, but he was allowed so much time and space to take a touch and then plant it across the goalkeeper into the far corner. Ipswich won, Leicester nil. Leicester hit the front yet again. Absolutely brilliant, sensational goal from Mavadidi. And we said, we've been saying this, they're the most dangerous down the left-hand side with Mavadidi. Like you said, though, Harry Clark gave him far too much time and little bit the Ipswich players a little bit of arguments going on as to why Mavadidi was allowed that much time but take nothing away from that goal got it onto his favourite right foot and kind of used Clark to bend it round him into the far corner and Vladky had absolutely no chance fantastic goal and we was just saying no real clear cut chances that wasn't a clear cut chance he created it himself brilliant finish 1-0 to Leicester and Leicester just keep on going as they seek a 10th win from 12 away games this season and the leaders lead at Portman Road in the battle of the top two. Ipswich on the attack straight away as they seek an equaliser. Burns with a cross to the near post, swept into touch by Vestigard, first time left footed. And a throw to Ipswich taken quickly by Clark goes back to Wolfenden. So, how will Ipswich respond? The draw here at home to Norwich, the thumping 4 0 defeat away at Leeds United. They've done the double over Ipswich this season. And as I said earlier, not once this campaign so far have Ipswich gone three league games without a win but they're behind and the chasing pack are closing in Chaplin with a misplaced pass not had any influence on the game so far the number 10 and it's Fatawu deep inside his own territory back to goalkeeper Hermanson under pressure from Jackson slices the clearance high up into the sky the ball drops on the far side the Leicester right and it's kept in play by Fatawu who's carried it forward into Ipswich territory skips in field beyond 2-3 in blue Leicester seem to be first to all the second balls, but it's been given away by Ricardo with a poor header. Morsi lays it square to Chaplin, 30 yards out right of centre. Chaplin wide to the near side and Burns. Burns looks up and thought about a cross, jinked away not once but twice from Mavididi, goes backwards in the end to Clark. Clark in field to Morsi, sticks it up the inside right channel, headed away by Ndidi. That's out of play for an Ipswich throw. Ipswich nil, Leicester 1 on Talk Sport 2. Here's Darren Ambrose. It's fantastic defending from Leicester. The desire to get back in. In their shape when they lost possession upfield Ipswich countered attack and immediately they got into that 4-3 with the two full, uh, wing wide players as well brilliant energy they're showing for a team that are top of the league brilliant Clark wide to the near side and Burns down by the dead ball line first time cross diving header away not entirely convincing by Vestergaard took a deflection off Chaplin the ball has spun to the near side the right again and Clark right down by the corner flag in front of Mavadidi who gets a good tackle in these Leicester City players work for each other all over the field of play the last touch was off Clark and that's a goal kick to Leicester City who lead by a goal to nil and suddenly against their nearest challengers Leicester City do look very comfortable at the moment they're heading nine points clear at the top on Boxing Day it's the intensity that Leicester are playing with and we talk about Ipswich making mistakes and being a little bit sloppy but it's because as soon as they get the ball Leicester two or three players are on them immediately the hot, the work that uh, Enzo Maresca's got them playing the, the hard work the high press the intensity absolutely brilliant to watch they go back to the goalkeeper Hermanson clad in a mixture of pink and purple tonight he hammers it high downfield Leicester City in the chain shirts his orange peach coloured shirts and Jewsbury Hall will roll the ball back to the edge of his own penalty area and there's Vestergaard waiting to control square ball to Connor Cody ticking towards the half hour mark now and not a restlessness about the Ipswich supporters they are 
trying to throw their weight behind their team. But certainly, I think the chanting that we're hearing is a is a measure of the concern, maybe, among the home fans at the moment. They've just been stifled a little bit, Joe. They're, they're, they don't really know what they're doing at the moment. Leicester are playing extremely well. They've lost George Hurst as well, key figure in the way Ipswich like to play. Caden Jackson coming on, different type of player. Doesn't look like Ipswich know what to do at the moment. Lovely ball by Vestigard up the middle. It split the defence and Dewsbury Hall is in. He's bundled over by Burgess, who got the ball, says the referee. Burgess shakes his head as Dewsbury Hall turned to appeal. No great appeals from the rest of the Leicester players on the field, which probably tells you all you need to know. But what a defence splitting pass that was from Yannick Vestergaard at the back. Fantastic pass from Vestergaard. He got the fullback playing quarterback passes. Sensational and great run from Dewsbury Hall. Great first touch as well. Would have been soft if it was given. I've seen them given, but it would have been soft. He did have his arm into the back of Dewsbury Hall. I was, I was wondering why he didn't just get his shot off, to be honest. He was one-on-one. -on -one. Burgess, he He's not the quickest of defenders, so Dewsbury Hall was going to get away from him, felt the touch and went down. It would have been soft, but like we said, we've seen them given, but what a brilliant pass, my best of God. Well, this is one of eight live commentaries that we have brought and are bringing you across Boxing Day on the TalkSport Network. 50 live games over the festive period in all and more live football than anybody else on national radio. 450 games between now and the end of the season, of course, including Euro 2024. Ipswich nil, Leicester won in the clash of the championships, top two. Half an hour played and Leicester the better team. Burns though, wins it back in the centre circle, trying to jink away from Harry Winks. Winks has held him up very well. Winks has been outstanding this season for Leicester City in midfield, the former Tottenham player. It's scooped up high down the middle by Wolfenden. More in hope than expectation. Header away by Vestergaard was an easy one. Flick forward though by Chaplin. The touch by Caden Jackson. The substitute with his back to goal. Got a glancing blow on it. Easily gathered by Hermanson. The Leicester goalkeeper and Hermanson has not had a save to make in the game so far. The partnerships that I'm so used to having worked for Ipswich that I'm so used to seeing Wes Burns and, and Connor Chaplin and, and Sammy Morsey normally in the middle with Leongo but at the moment with Jack Taylor we're not quite seeing them they're not working they're not ticking at the moment and that's a credit to Leicester and the way they're playing as I spoke about the intensity they're certainly on it tonight and You've got to say they deserve it of the 1-0 lead. Ipswich have failed to keep a clean sheet again and it's Leicester on the attack with Dewsbury Hall darting infield from the right. He looks to throw it towards the left and, and Didi and there too was Mavididi but Clark was there on the intercept and Clark sets Burns away down the right-hand side. Burns early ball in towards Jackson. Vestergaard saw it coming. Pedalling back towards his own goal and was able to make the interception. Good work by Vestergaard, but the ball was too obvious from Burns. And now Leicester on the attack again. This time the pass is over, hit by Winks, angled towards the left-hand side. Mavadidi, the scorer, can't keep it in play. Throw to Ipswich in their right-back position. You can see the disappointment in Wes Burns' face. He know, knows that was an opportunity. Outpaced about fares down the right-hand side. Good, good um, battle between those two. Just didn't get the ball right and it was intercepted by Vestergaard. If he did... Caden Jackson had got in front of Connor Cody and he'd have, had, he'd have had an opportunity. Just got it wrong. Always a great occasion here on Boxing Day, says Kieran McKenna. Ipswich trail, though, tonight so far. Ball into the penalty area by Taylor. Right-footed in-swinger gathered easily by the goalkeeper Hermanson. And Jackson hasn't had much to work with in terms of service since coming onto the field. Ipswich have been pretty flat in attack, which is really unlike them. They've scored in their last 27 home league games. That, unsurprisingly, is a joint club record. They're looking to set a new club record tonight. But as Leicester City have proved, not so easy to do that against a team of Leicester's quality in the Championship. Maybe Premier League in waiting again. Dakar with his back to goal, can't hold it up, shrugged aside by Morsi, but Mavadidi's there to whip it off the Ipswich captain's toes. And now his fast in the left-back position, teasing it all the way back to the goalkeeper, Hermanson. And admirable Leicester City, because now that they have the lead, they certainly don't need to force the issue, Darren Ambrose. No, they're just comfortable. They're comfortable in every position. Vestergaard, Connor Cody, comfortable in possession, like to get the ball off um, the goalkeeper, Hermanson. Four ball though by Vestergaard, one back by Ipswich, Harness crosses, takes a big deflection, loops up into the air over the top of Jackson. Davis is just going to let it trickle out of play, is he? He is for another Ipswich corner. As the home team seek an equaliser, this corner at the Sir Alf Rams the end of the ground. 1-0 down, Ipswich. And Burgess is among those forward, Jackson lurking as well. 
Wolfen in a state back. Davis out swinging corner over the head of Burgess, headed away by Fass. It'll drop down to Jack Taylor, middle of the Leicester half. Everybody back for Leicester City here. Taylor scampers away from Mavididi into a left of centre position, knocks it wide left to the far side. And Davis, who wants the return pass, Davis gets it, does he from Taylor? Hammered away by Ricardo, smacks that into the area where the Leicester fans are seated. And that's an Ipswich throw. That's bailed by Ipswich at the moment down the left hand side this time. All the danger has come down the right hand side. This time it's Leaf Davis down the left hand side with Jack Taylor better the last couple of minutes by Ipswich Wolfenden smack bang in the middle of the Leicester half midway into opposition territory turns away from Harry Winks goes square to Morsi Morsi angles the pass out to the left hand side the far side and Davis he gets the return ball from Taylor again but there is no great pace for this Ipswich attack at the moment Wolfenden chips the ball high up the inside left channel drops to Burgess edge of the box can't knock it back into the path of a teammate Dewsbury Hall scampers to win it back for Leicester City and now Leicester looking to play their way out of the defence, which they do so near enough expertly until Cody slices a, an ugly clearance high up into the air. The knockdown won by Taylor, flicked on by Harness. Jackson back to goal, shoots low, drags it wide of goal, and the pressure from Cody. Better, though, from Kieran McKenna's Ipswich Town. The team in second, trail the league leaders Leicester by a goal to nil live on Talk Sport 2. A lot better there, a lot better. Caden Jackson getting finally getting into the game, having an opportunity, just slashed his shot wide. But the previous chance, and it fell to Cam Burgess on the edge. Right place, wrong man to fall to. If it's Connor Chaplin there, we've seen that this uh, many times. He just hits it first time with his left foot. This time he tried to little back, back heel to a, a teammate and there was no one there. So good, good bit of pressure by Ipswich last few minutes. Ten minutes of the first half remaining. And a sold out Portman Road, more than... 29,000 here again tonight. Hermanson, the Leicester goalkeeper, hammers it high up the inside right channel. And Fatawu was in an offside position. So that'll be a free kick to Ipswich. It's Manchester United nil, Aston Villa nil in the 8 o'clock kickoff in the Premier League. That live and only on Talk Sport. Make sure you download the Talk Sport app. It's free, easy to download, and you can swipe between both stations at your leisure. We've got the uh, PDC World Darts Championships at Ali Paddy 2 as Ipswich lose possession, and here's Ndidi darting through the middle. Slide tackle from Clark at the last. A brilliantly timed challenge after Ndidi played a very incisive one-two with Pats and Dacker on the edge of the penalty area. Leicester nearly carving out a chance of out of absolutely nothing following the Ipswich defensive error, and Clark got back to make an important challenge. The last touch was off Ndidi and it went out of play for a goal kick in the end. Yeah, and it was Harry Clark making amends for his own mistake. Him and Sammy Morsey, a little bit of confusion in the middle of the park. He, he played a sloppy pass, Harry Clark, and indeed he ended up getting in. And in the end, fantastic challenge by Harry Clark to get back and, and rectify his own mistake. So fair play. Manchester United nil, Aston Villa won. John McGinn, more misery for Manchester United, wow. Darren. It's crazy. <laughs> What is going on? Man United it? and Chelsea this season. Absolutely. And what an extraordinary season Aston Villa are having. I said this many weeks ago. Aston Villa has to be taken seriously. When they got the result against Arsenal and Liverpool, I thought they've got to be... I'm um, Man City, sorry. They've got to be taken seriously. And once again, they're proving that they should be. It's live on TalkSport right now. Here in TalkSport 2, your home of the EFL, our focus on the championship. Now we have brought you... Some super live football already today. Preston North End beating Leeds by two goals to one. Birmingham one, Stoke three in the early evening kickoff. And we also brought you Bournemouth's big win over Fulham in the Premier League by three goals to nil. And Liverpool top of the Premier League as it stands after beating Burnley earlier live on Talk Sport. We've had all the football today. What a day it's been around the grounds elsewhere in the EFL, up and down the country too. Hammered clearance downfield by Hladke, the Ipswich goalkeeper. The flick down the middle by Jackson. Nobody there in a blue shirt, able to reach the second ball. And Vestergaard sees it back carefully to his goalkeeper, Hermanson, who clips it high right-footed on the angle towards the right. Header one in the air by Burgess in front of Fatawu, but it drops to a Leicester City shirt. It's Kean and Dewsbury Hall. And now Vestergaard in that orange shirt again. 
on the edge of his penalty area. Little one-two with Ndidi and Leicester comfortable in possession, leading 1-0. 37 and a half minutes gone. Hermanson, the goalkeeper, right through the middle towards Dakar. And then the slice up into the air by Dewsbury Hall. Drops down beneath the floodlights and Burns will pluck it out of the air, but he's given it straight to Mavididi, who's got the pace to drive forward. Can he thread it through the middle? He does. The chance on here for Dakar. And he's denied by the goalkeeper, Hladki, who made a great sprawling save. Good starting position, Hladki, to turn that behind for a corner. Leicester so nearly in for a second. They are so dangerous going forward. When they win possession, which is normally Ipswich sloppy play in the middle of the park, giving it away too easily. They are so dangerous and quick on the counter-attack. And once again, almost got in. If it wasn't for a great save by Vadki, that would be 2-0. And it's Mavadidi, the goal scorer, who'll take the in-squeaking corner. Right-footed into the area towards Wilford and Didi. Turned away first time, right-footed by Wolfenden. Only as far as the halfway line of the Leicester City captain, Ricardo. Square ball now to Winks. Winks just inside Ipswich territory, pivots and turns. Muted now, the crowd really, at Portman Road, because Leicester continuing to look a threat as they seek a second. Five wins in a row for Leicester coming into tonight. And they're heading for six and a nine-point lead at the top and a gap of 13 points, it would be, between them and the third-place team, Southampton. Yeah, league's almost over. <laughs> as, as, as much <laughs> as this game was like nearly that. almost over with the chance just, just then, yeah, Leicester, look, they're, they're showing why they're top of the league in this match. They're stifling Ipswich. Ipswich have had their moments at the, uh, up to now, but nothing real of note, nothing really clear-cut. A couple of moments ago, um, Jackson had an opportunity to head it behind as Leith Davis was run off the back of Fatou. He, he chose the wrong header to do and headed it the other way. If he'd have done, then Leith Davis would have been in. It's those moments there that they just need to get right, Ipswich, to get back into this game. And rare that Ipswich don't look like scoring, particularly at home. They've scored 32 home league goals so far, but Matt Hermanson hasn't had to get his gloves dirty yet, the Leicester goalkeeper. I think Kieran McKenna will always be confident that his team will score. It's normally dangerous playing that style that will score more than you, especially when you have Leeds, Southampton, Leicester's. It's, that's a dangerous style of play, but he's always confident his team will get on the score sheet. Growing from the home fans as Ipswich can't keep the ball and Leicester moving the ball about with an increased tempo now as Connor Cody steps into Ipswich territory for to Dewsbury Hall, left-footed, and he tries to get the one-two back from Winks Dewsbury Hall. He pokes it on the slide, wide to the near side, the left and fast with the black and red boots on. 1-0 to Leicester in the 41st minute. Mabadini plays it back to Winks again. Winks midway inside the Ipswich half. Square ball now to Cody. Cody a long way from goal. Former Everton man gets it back from Dewsbury Hall once more. Leicester content to keep possession. That rhythmic possession football that they play and so incisive so quickly Leicester City and even since the goal they've cut through Ipswich on a couple of occasions and look really dangerous Harry Winks is a tidy football player in the middle of the park as well just recycles possession very rarely does he lose it he's been a good signing for Leicester that experience in the middle coming from Spurs he just gets it he plays the fullback he just keeps possession sometimes that's all you need your centre midfielders to do and he's very very good at it Second for Aston Villa at Old Trafford. Wow. Leander Dendonka. Manchester United nil Aston Villa 2. It's live on Talk Sport right now. That was an 8 o'clock kickoff, so they began 15 minutes later than we did here at Portman Road, where it's still Ipswich nil, Leicester 1. Make sure you get the Talk Sport app to swipe between both stations at your leisure. Extraordinary first 28 minutes at Old Trafford. I wonder what the atmosphere is like there, <laughs> by the way. Mutinous, probably. I certainly will be. Eric but Hard Aston Villa have been brilliant. They've yeah. been brilliant and they, they deserve everything they're getting at the moment. I really like Unai Emery as a manager. I think he's one of the very, very best in the Premier League. I've always said there's that elite group, Klopp and Pep, and he's just below that. He's not quite in there just yet. He just needs to win something. And that's coming. Ipswich up there with the elite of the championship this season and they win themselves a corner. Fatou sliding in on Davis. That's corner number five for Kieran McKenna's team so far. Trying to bounce back after suffering the heaviest defeat of his tenure last weekend at Leeds. And it's the former Leeds man, Davis, again, who will place the ball down to take the corner. It'll be an outswinger from that far side in front of the Leicester fans. It'll be left-footed. Burgess Clark is forward as well. Whipped in by Davis towards the near post. Jackson flung himself at it. The ball was behind Caden Jackson. Punched away by Hermanson at the near post. He couldn't claim. The referee, though, has spotted a foul. And Leicester have a free kick. It looked more to me, if anything, that the 
goalkeeper Hermanson had knocked over indeed himself, but Sam Barrett didn't see it that way, Darren. Yeah, I agree with you, Joe. It looked like that the goalkeeper had knocked his own defender over and Caden Jackson almost nipped in and, and tapped it in an empty net, but it's only what we can see here with this massive pole in our way. <laughs> <laughs> the infamous Portman Road pole. <laughs> I just looked at the, the corner there and it's a bit too static for Ipswich. There, there's no real movement into the box there and it's too easy to defend from Leicester and they almost had the opportunity with, with their own making Ipswich, it seemed like, but a little bit too static. I think Kieran McKenna will be a bit disappointed with the set plays. And they've lost George Hurst to injury during this half of football Ipswich. Less than two minutes of normal time remain in the first half. Ipswich nil, Leicester won. Steffi Mavadidi with a fine finish for Leicester, though the Ipswich defending, I think, left a lot to be desired. And still no clean sheet for Ipswich now in the Championship uh, since earlier on this month, December the 9th. One clean sheet in 12 in the league. Here is Wolfenden, in the number six, midway inside his own half. You can see the warm breath of the players out on the field of play. It's that kind of cold tonight. Morsi on the halfway line, no wriggling pass and Didi though. And a lovely ball by Ricardo out to the left and Mavadidi again. Dakas in the middle, Mavadidi caught in the penalty area. Dewsbury Hall joining the attack, it's only half cleared. Scrambled away by Chaplin up towards halfway. A lucky escape for Ipswich. They've won it back though, Leicester, with the captain Ricardo. Midway inside the Ipswich half, they play some lovely flowing football, Leicester City, when they go up through the gears in the attacking third. Dewsbury Hall with his back to goal. Such a cultured player. Has to be just about the best player at this level, Keen and Dewsbury Hall. Yeah, he's, it was a massive keep in him at the football club for Leicester. Real, real talent, real good football player. Neat, tidy, can score goals. We've seen that. I think Harry Clark there was just... He got attracted, he got done by the one-two. He got attracted to the ball, which allowed Mavadidi in acres of space again down the left-hand side. I think Kieran McKenna will be looking to, to change this situation. Lovely touch by Winks to try and poke it through to a teammate but Wes Burns got it half away for Ipswich then it's hammered into touch by Yannick Vestigar the roar of the home supporters some of whom are out of their seats and heading for the concourse areas ahead of half time Ipswich will try and seize upon any sort of bit of positivity or good fortune in the game as we tick towards first half stoppage time and they are only 1-0 down to the league leaders yeah, it could change very, very quickly. We've seen that. Kieran McKenna will get them into half-time. He'll, he'll, he'll really want them in at half-time to, to give him the information of what he's seen on the edge of the um, on his edge of his, uh, his technical area. There's a lot to be changed, probably. We may see a substitute or two at half-time, to be honest. I think the left-hand side with Mavadidi, he's really getting in a lot down against Harry Clark and just getting attracted to the ball quite a lot, Harry Clark. So I think we may see a change, if not a half-time, 10, 15 minutes into the second half. Is he getting enough help, Clark? from Burns ahead of him is that a question to ask maybe yeah potentially I think we said that their most dangerous side is their left and here come Ipswich dangerous on their far side the left early ball into the near post Burns coming into the far and Fass got across on the slide to steer it behind for an Ipswich corner what a quick lightning quick break that was that, that is what Ipswich do the counter attack Leaf Davies Wes Burns down this side again similar to the fatter we won in the first half fantastic defending by Valtfez to, to say that's a, that's a, that's a goal-stopping tackle, that one. And Davis is going to take the corner again. 1-0 down Ipswich in first half stoppage time, a minute into it. Plenty forward in blue and white. Davis delivers high to the six-sharp box. Flicked away by Ndidi. Further cleared by Mavadidi. Drops the edge of the penalty area. Morsi sizes up a shot. That's blocked. The ball spins up into the air. Headed away not convincingly by Connor Cody. Flicked out towards the Leicester right by Fatawu. Out of play. Ipswich throw. Deep inside opposition territory. 90 seconds into four added at the end of the first half. And Ipswich, the team in second place in the championship, threatening to finish the half the stronger as they seek an equaliser. Yeah, certainly finishing it stronger. Huge opportunity. And then once again, great defending from Boutfairs to stop Wes Burns from tapping it into the net. But yeah, Ipswich finishing this half a lot stronger. Long throw into the penalty area by Davis. Poor, cleared away by Ricardo. It's dropped down to Wolfenden. Wolfenden plays it first time, left-footed to Taylor. Taylor infield to Morsi, middle of the Leicester half. Leicester with everybody back behind the ball. A sea of orange shirts in front of Ipswich Town. Clark plays it back to Wolfenden, who's just 10 yards into the Leicester half. Out to the left-hand side again, and Taylor. We've had over two of the four added minutes in the first half. Taylor's on the edge of the box, looking to thread it forward inside left channel. Only half cleared. It's come back out wide to Davis. 
Davis. Davis darting in field from the left, pokes it into the penalty area. Burns tries a shot that's blocked, hacked away. Some rock desperately by Patson Dacker. And for the first time in the game, a bit of desperation about the Leicester City defending, maybe. And now Harness tearing forward, infield from the left, he's evaded two, three, four, he's tried to thread it through to Jackson, Jackson couldn't control, good idea, good invention and pace from Marcus Harness, sprinting infield from the far side, the left, that's the first time we've seen him really create any sort of half opening, the pass had too much on it, and it's through to Hermanson, the goalkeeper. Yeah, it's those moments, Joe, we spoke about, just need to get that right, the end product's not great, this may have changed Kieran McKenna's team talk at half-time, actually, because they've had a real positive feel finish to this first half and maybe just more of the same in the second half. Liverpool top of the Premier League after beating Burnley. It's Manchester United near Aston Villa 2 on Talk Sport right now. Everton against Manchester City, Chelsea against Crystal Palace, Brentford against Wolves tomorrow on the network and then on the uh, following evening, the 28th of December, Brighton against Tottenham and Arsenal against West Ham. And then the EFL returns to Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2. Here come Ipswich with Taylor suddenly surging forward. He's found the pace from nowhere. Taylor wide to the near side and Burns. Burns is level the edge of the 18-yard box, twisting and playing it back to Clark. Clark's got time to hang up a high right-footed cross. Jackson's lurking. Oh, and it's spun off on Dini and roll behind for another corner. Hermanson, the goalkeeper, was scrambling there. Last few seconds of first half stoppage time. Corner to Ipswich who trail 1-0. There's the noise to Portman Road again. Davis to take the corner. It'll be left-footed. It'll hang high, out swinging towards Chaplin at the back post. Chaplin, one of the smaller players on the field with a flying header. And it's gone miles wide. And that is half-time. So Leicester lead, but some encouragement for Kieran McKenna and Ipswich as the half drew to a close there. And those Ipswich players sprint towards the tunnel, away to the corner of the ground on our right-hand side as we look at it. And Ipswich still with purpose and still with hope in the match, though it is Leicester City who, as it stands, will head nine points clear at the top of the championship and 13 clear of Southampton in third as they lead on this Boxing Day. Steffi Mavadidi with a fine finish after 25 minutes to give them the advantage. The Ipswich defending was poor, too much space for Mavadidi, but my, how he placed it well into the far corner. His fifth goal in as many games and in the battle of the top to this much vaunted, highly anticipated game that we've all been looking forward to. It is Ipswich nil, Leicester one at half time. Joe Shannon there alongside former Ipswich midfielder Darren Ambrose at Portman Road. And Darren, we saw a kind of change in the pace of the last five minutes there, and that's kind of what Ipswich need to do when they come out in the second half because they go in a goal down, they've got to they've got to make something happen, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. As I was just saying to Joe there, it's probably changed the half-time team talk of Kieran McKenna. Mm. The first five or six minutes was all Ipswich as well, and then they have ended it the last five or six minutes of the half all Ipswich. Other than that, Leicester have dominated the, the middle part of this game and probably rightly go in at half-time in the lead. Fantastic goal from Mavadidi. But yeah, Ipswich finished that very, very strongly. And you could tell there was real momentum because, as Joe said, as soon as a half-time whistle uh, was blown, they all sprinted down the tunnel while Leicester was just chilled and walking in. So they're really raring to go probably for this second half. They are. We know Kieran McKenna wanted Portman Road to be completely behind them. They need every little bit of help they can get. We can see why Leicester City are the league leaders with that performance. A great goal, as you say there, from Mavadidi. But a big loss uh, for Ipswich with George Hurst there. It looks like a hamstring injury. Yeah, he did try and come back on. He, he, he picked up, we see, he overstretched on a pass. I think it was Sammy Morsey, just outstretched. And you could see him go down holding his hamstring. The, the physio came on, done all the tests for the hamstring. And we knew that it's his former club, Leicester. So he was going to try and carry on. And he didn't even get four or five yards onto the pitch as he was running back on. And he collapsed to the floor again. So it's a huge loss for Ipswich. He's key to the way Kieran likes to play. And you could see Caden Jackson come on. And they couldn't quite get to grips with him running in behind as opposed to George Hurst coming in and, and helping and that allows Chaplin and, and Wes Burns time to get to get in behind them so that 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 that's been a big loss for Ipswich at the moment and they took a while to get back get in, into the game yeah, you could tell with George Hurst, he, he knew he was smiling while he sat there on the ground, knowing that, uh, you know, he tried his best to carry on, but it wasn't going to happen. When the teams come out in the second half, do you feel that, you know, it's too early to make any major changes? It's just a case of Ipswich just uh, just being more confident and trying more things with Leicester. It's not the time to think about bringing any subs on. 
Well, initially I was thinking five minutes before half time, yeah, potentially. I think Harry Clark's been getting caught out of possession mm. a few times. Mavadidi has been getting in behind too much space, scored a good goal by having a lot of space. And then you look at the, the, the bench four, you've got Nathan Broadhead on top form this season as well. Ledapo can come on, change. Luongo can come on and just shore things up in the midfield if needed. And Brandon Williams, who can maybe replace Harry Clark because he's full of energy and it will give Mavadidi another question to, to, to see if he can defend Brandon Williams getting forward. If you're Leicester, you're happy with the way the half's going. Potentially should have maybe been one or two more up, but I think Leicester will come out and just continue the way they're playing. Ipswich has to take it to Leicester. Yeah, it sets it up for an exciting second half. Thank you very much, former Ipswich midfielder Darren Ambrose will return with Joe Shannon for second half commentary very, very soon here on EFL Live on TalkSport 2. It's been a massive day of live football across the Premier League and the EFL as well. This is the final of three championship commentaries here on TalkSport 2. We've also had four and a half nearly Premier League matches over on TalkSport and here on TalkSport 2. Uh, well, I say half because Manchester United are currently 2-0 down at home to Aston Villa after 40 minutes there. You can catch what's going on in that game over on TalkSport right now and stay here for the second half of this exciting game in the Championship. Second versus first. It's all advantage to the team in first as we go in for half-time. But can Ipswich get back into this game at Portman Road? Half-time in EFL Live. Ipswich nil. Leicester City 1 here on TalkSport 2. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. For football fans, New Year means one thing, new signings. Daily transfer window updates on TalkSport with Intuit QuickBooks. Listen to White and Jordan weekday mornings from 10 and get the inside track on all the movement in the transfer market from the most well-connected men in football. And they're back in the game! The big money business, the last minute loans, the superstar signings. What a debut! Stay ahead of the game with daily transfer window updates on TalkSport with Intuit QuickBooks. That's how you business differently. Ah, that'll be my Amazon delivery. Magnificent goal! Beautiful football! Brilliant finish! Amazon delivers the Premier League. Live today from 11.30. Manchester United v Aston Villa, Burnley v Liverpool and Newcastle v Nottingham Forest. Holland! Only on Prime. At Eon Next, we believe life's better when you know that if you need help with your energy... There's a team of dedicated energy specialists who work hard to get it sorted. So you can get back to doing what you like quicker. We think that makes energy a little bit better. And that's why we're always working towards helping you get more out of your energy. So visit eonnext.com today. With LV, I can get my car insurance from just £299, which is just the kind of price I'm looking for right now. And if I'm hit by an uninsured driver, I won't lose my no-claim discount, because insurance is simple when it's me and LV. No wonder we're rated excellent on Trustpilot. Get your quote today at lv.com. 10% of new customers pay £299 or less May to October 2023. Uninsured driver promise is non-fault, accident only. Other vehicle and driver details required. A traffic update for all late-night travellers. There are delays outside getting to bed due to a hold-up of Grand's never-ending stories. Please take the diversion via Mayo Chicken or a warming latte, which will see you home. Plenty of McDonald's restaurants are open late tonight. See mcdonalds.com for opening times. A magical Christmas with Lidl means picking up a good housekeeping best supermarket wine 2023. A Portuguese Douro Reserve for just 6 99 And an award-winning French Pitbull de Penne for 7 49 Or a Spanish Rioja Crianza for just 5 99 Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores GB only. On DAB+, Plus, online, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. Half-time score at Portman Road. Ipswich nil, Leicester City won. Both of these teams gunning to get back into the Premier League. Ipswich have had a little bit of a longer wait, 22 years since they were relegated from the top flight. Leicester City looking to bounce back straight away, as Burnley did. And it's been a challenging start to the season for those three clubs that were promoted back to the Premier League after last season. The last time that all three promoted teams were immediately relegated from the Premier League was back in the 97-98 season when Barnsley, Bolton, and Crystal Palace all went back down again. Could we see that again this season, though? 
grabbing the lays it back to Nunez and in the area. 1-0 Liverpool. And Darwin Nunez scores his first Premier League goal since October. Morris on the spin. Sits his man down, rolls it back. He's got across. It's another own goal. Bournemouth played OK. And they've won this 3-0 at a canter. And it's obviously the confidence they're playing. Well, there's speculation as to what the tactics would be for Nottingham Forest here. I don't think any of us had them coming here and scoring three goals and taking all three points. Burnley still can't get those precious points that a relegation scrap would need at home. We had our chances as well. And, and in those moments, you know, games get decided at this level. The final whistle goes and it's finished Sheffield United 2, Luton Town 3. A disastrous defeat for Sheffield United at home. He's swung it on his left and we're in the six-yard box and anything can happen. It's not unlucky, it's self inflicted okay, I'm just really, really proud again of the football club, of the players, the supporters, the, the staff. I've needed that support this week. Yes, and big results in the Premier League for those teams that went out of the Championship last season. Sheffield United, Luton Town was a five-goal thriller. Went in the favour of Luton Town in the end, of course. Uh, Nottingham Forest taking themselves slightly away from things. They needed that win, a 3-0 uh, three, uh, three win, sorry, earlier. 3-1 win, sorry, I'll get it right eventually, uh, at Newcastle earlier on, which was so much of a shock. I couldn't even believe it when I read it out just then. And uh, Darren Ambrose still alongside me here. When you look at those teams that went up, Sheffield United, United. Obviously, when they're playing Luton Town, it's you know, two teams right down at the bottom there, and it went in favour of Luton in the end with a kind of backwards and forwards game there. There's not a lot of hope for Sheffield United, I would say. The only hope for them is that they have got Chris Wilder back, and he's a guy that loves that club. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Chris Wilder is huge for, for Sheffield United, and you know, it ended a little bit sour. We know that the way it ended last time out, but he, he knows the club, he knows the Premier League. I do think it's potentially an appointment with the Championship in mind, because um, I, I agree with you, John. I think it's. I think they, they're going to struggle. I, I, I think Sheffield United will finish rock bottom of, of this division. They, they had opportunities to win today against Luton, which would have been a good win. But when you're in a relegation battle, you have the tops, the bottom six or seven teams and you have your own mini league. And if you beat in the teams around you, it doesn't really help that much, particularly when you're when you're Luton and you're beating Sheffield United. You've got to be beating the, like Brentford, Fulham, Palace, teams like that. I think Luton out of the three that got promoted are the, the only one I give half a chance to staying up this year. Yeah, Luton have got back-to-back -back wins there with the, the winner against Newcastle that no one really saw coming. And given Newcastle have had a tricky time recently, I guess, you know, if you look back, it does make sense in hindsight. But mm. getting that result against Sheffield United today was very important for them to get that victory given who they were playing. And as you say, that's the difference, isn't it? It's getting those results against the other teams that you're battling down there. And then Burnley, I mean, we're not going to give Burnley, you know, much of a hope against New, uh, Liverpool at home. Haven't obviously seen that yet. It's been going on while we've been bringing coverage of the championship, but they are very much down there as well. Now four points, uh, five points away from Everton in the, the final place above the relegation zone. And Vincent Company's still trying to do his thing there, but, you know, it's not really working as it did last season in the championship. No, it's it's a strange one with Burnley because with Vincent Company, and last year they won the championship at a canter, nearly got record points. They were fantastic fantastic and the problem is he's gone into the Premier League with the same style of play and it, it's it's strange that a man like Vincent Company, so experienced in the game um, playing for Manchester City would go and try and play the style of play that he's doing at the moment because you're never going to get away with it against the teams like Liverpool's and, and Man City is he, you're going to get really overrun but at the moment he's sticking to his guns he's playing the way he wants to but I just I don't give them much hope either I think we we're potentially going to see again the teams that promoted all go down to be honest if Luton are the team that escape we've got Everton a point ahead of them obviously they've dropped into the relegation zone with that point deduction and they've gone straight back out and Sean Dyche doing great things there Forest Palace a couple of points away themselves yeah. with Brentford even down there on 19 points so only four points off the relegation zone if one of those teams is going to drop in which one do you worry for? I, I, I'm, I'm worried for Crystal Palace a little bit but I just look at them and I've seen them many many times I used to work there a lot um, over previous years and they do it they can pick up two or three results on the bounce and it gets them clear and they normally finish 12th in the Premier League and you put them put your money on them finish 12th again this season uh, Everton it, it shows the how bad the teams are they've been deducted 10 points and they're still outside the relegation zone and Sean Dyche is is 
brilliant in these situations. They'll get out of it. Nottingham Forest, fantastic result today. Chris Wood, I mean, as I was joking earlier, someone would have triple captain Chris Wood, and I don't know how they'd have done that on the Fantasy <laughs> Premier League, but they certainly will have. But great result for them today against Newcastle. So if I'm looking in that situation, I can't see anyone else swapping. I really can't. I can just see it being Jeff United, Burnley and Luton in that order. Yeah, and if these two teams that we're watching here go up next season as you know you've already said many times that you feel yeah. Leicester City are, are almost a dead cert I, I can't see especially with them it happening again next season because you'd think Leicester City would get back into the Premier League and they've got more class on the pitch now than we're seeing in these teams in the Premier League really yeah if Leicester was in the Premier League this season they would nowhere near be the relegation zone they're a fantastic squad we've already said that we've discussed that so yeah and I, I I say the same thing about Ipswich. There's certainly more question marks over um, more players for Ipswich, whether they could cut it in the Premier League. But I still see this Ipswich Town team surviving if it was this year in the Premier League. Of course, if Leicester go up like I, I say they're going to, they'll they'll be fine next year. They definitely won't happen because they they'll be backed as well. They've got Premier League quality players: Keenan Drewsby Hall, Harry Winks, uh, Connor Cody. They're all experienced in the Premier League so they'll be absolutely fine and like I said if it's Ipswich there's more question marks you've got Leeds and Southampton as well in the top four both fantastic squads those two so it definitely won't be happening again next year yeah definitely some teams very well placed whoever assuming these two teams go up and will be positive for Ipswich's sake and your sake Darren but assuming you know Leeds or Southampton go up you'd imagine that they would give it a better crack than that, what we're seeing at the moment uh, we'll move on from that we'll talk a bit more about Crystal Palace after the game but let's get straight back into it for the second half then uh, at Portman Road, Ipswich nil, Leicester City won at half time, but Ipswich showing some promise towards the end of that first half. Joining former Ipswich midfielder Darren Ambrose for second half commentary here on EFL Live on Talksport 2, it's Joe Shannon. Thanks, John, and it doesn't look like there have been changes for either team at half time in this clash between second and first in the championship. The first meeting since February 2014 in the league between Ipswich Town and Leicester City and it's Leicester the league leaders who are stretching their advantage at the summit of the championship as it stands and that stay out of the Premier League really doesn't look like it's going to be a particularly long one for Leicester City if they continue to play and get results like this well Leicester will get the game back underway in their orange shirts white shorts and orange socks playing from left to right towards the Sir Ralph Ramsey stand, there are Ipswich fans at both ends of the stadium. The Leicester fans are on the far side of the field in the cobbled stand, about 2,000 of them. And Ipswich in their blue and white, playing from right to left towards the uh, Sir Bobby Robson end, which is uh, certainly the most raucous of the two ends of the ground, the noisiest end. Early touch for Connor Cody to the right of the Leicester back line, and he scoops the ball towards the halfway line. They gave it away. Harness laid it left to Leif Davis in field and Davis tried to knock the pass down the middle towards Caden Jackson but there was too much on it and it was easy for the Leicester goalkeeper Mads Hermanson. Lots of home supporters making their way back to their seats as Leicester very nearly give it away Hermanson had to race towards the corner flag, excellent starting position for the goalkeeper to hammer it into touch but Ipswich already showing that they will provide I think a little more energy and a little more tenacity at times in this second half than they did in the first. At times, they didn't really lay a glove on Leicester and the atmosphere was rather muted. I'll give you the two sides in full again in just a second, but it's Ipswich coming forward on the far side there, right. Burns cutting in field, running into trouble, dispossessed by Winks, who just stepped across him to get the tackle in. And now Mavadidi racing towards the halfway down on the counter. He's lost out to Harry Clark. Clark driving forward on the burst, corner of the area. Jackson's back to goal. He's tried to cut it back across. It's come off Connor Cody. It's a corner to Ipswich Town and a very positive start to the second half from Kieran McKenna's team, who always score at home, Darren Ambrose. They certainly do. And like I said, Kieran McKenna will always be confident they're going to get a goal. And it's just getting to grips for Caden Jackson. We've already seen Leif Davis try and hit his feet when he wanted it in behind. This time, Clark put it in behind and he made a great run and won the corner. Davis with the in-swinging corner towards Burgess. And he's headed it over the top. 
from the edge of the six-yard box, the centre-half who hasn't scored since March, he probably should have had a goal there. Still Ipswich nil, Leicester 1 on Talks 4-2. Yeah, not probably, Joe. He definitely should have scored that. He will be devastated. He hasn't he, he hasn't hit the target. He hasn't made Hermanson um, even work to save that. He was free. It was unmarked in the box. Great corner from Leif Davies. Unmarked and got his head all wrong. Well, Kieran McKenna standing, arms folded on the edge of his technical area. I wonder if they've had a rocket at half-time, those Ipswich players. Not that they were particularly poor, but they just didn't come into the game with their usual high-octane style. They've got some defending to do here. Leicester with Mavadidi, the goal scorer, darting infield from left to right into a position on the corner of the penalty area. Early ball to Ndidi, who crosses in from the left-hand side. Maybe should have gone for goal. In the end, over-hit it. Ended up on his front on the edge of the six-yard box and it's gone behind for a goal kick to Ipswich we've had big chances at both ends Leicester lead by a goal to nil from the angle we're sat at Joe it looked like that was just chipped into the far corner and was about to nestle into the far side of the net but no he tried to play the cross to Fatawu at the back post and got it all wrong I agree with you I think he should have shot once again Mavadili looking dangerous down the left-hand side for Leicester so it's Lanky in goal for Ipswich the goalkeeper in grey on the ball now with Clark, Wilfenden, Burgess and Davis the back four Taylor and Morsi in the holding roles Burns, Chaplin and Harness behind Jackson up front Jackson a first half substitute for the injured George Hurst I'll give you the Leicester side in a second Ipswich on the attack with Chaplin the number 10 quickly right to the right and where's Burns attacking the corner of the penalty area good defending by Vestergaard to stop that attack in its tracks. Oh, but Burns has not made Vestergaard. He's won it back. He's pulled it across. Chaplin, it comes to Davis. Davis, left-footed effort from the angle. Blocked by Fatawu. There's the noise of the 29,000 or so at Portman Road. Ipswich with this formidable home record. Only lost once at home in the league so far this season. They're second in the table and they're coming forward again. They want to peg back the league leaders on Talk Sport 2. They're 1-0 down. Four minutes into the second half. Leicester on the back foot all of a sudden. Here is Burgess for Ipswich. Wide left to Taylor, hugging the touchline. Infield on the near side from Davis. Square pass towards Harness over hit. Over Jackson, hassling and harrying Ricardo, who nearly conceded possession. Long goes Connor Cody. Lovely little touch by Patson Dacker, controlled on his chest with great elegance by Ndidi. Look at that from Leicester City. Little ball popped back by Keane and Dewsbury Hall to the feet of Vestigard. Lovely football from the visitors. And suddenly they look to turn defence into attack. On the halfway line is Winks. On to Mavididi. Sweeping ball by Ricardo out wide to the left. And Mavididi controls the number 10. Corner of the penalty area. Twisting and turning and crossing left footed. High to the far post. Fatawu with the effort. And it spins up off the top of the turf and goes over the top. Sort of scissor kick from Abdul Fatawu. It would have been a wonderful second goal of the game for Leicester City, who lead 1 0 his down. Ambrose. Yeah, chances at both ends again. Mavadi, it's, it's the left hand side for Leicester and the right hand side for Ipswich. Mavadidi once again taking on Harry Clark, being positive. This time finds Fatawu, who does decide to hit it first time, hits it into the ground, just bounces over the bar. But and the, the chance for Ipswich, Wes Burns down the right hand side. I thought he'd overdone it really against Vestergaard. Good defending, wins it back, plays a cross field pass, finds Leif Davis and Fatawu down the other end. Brilliant block. This has been a great start for both teams in the second half. Leicester Hermanson in goal. Ricardo, Cody, Vestigard and Fast, the defenders. Winks, Dewsbury Hall and Ndidi in midfield. Mavadidi, the goal scorer. And Fatawu, either side of Daka up front. Noise raining down from the stands on a cold night, a cold boxing day at Portman Road with the floodlights on. A boxing day where Southampton closed the gap on the top two to four points after thrashing Swansea. Leeds beaten at Preston North End. Wayne Rooney's Birmingham beaten at home by Stoke. Live on Talk Sport 2 earlier. In the Premier League, Liverpool topped the table after a win at Aston Villa. Live on Talk Sport. Here is Jackson with his back to goal for Ipswich Town. He's held it up in a central position. He shuffled it to the right and Chaplin. Chaplin on the edge of the penalty area. Urged to shoot and does left footed. It's blocked. The loose ball's ricocheted to Morsi. Square ball to Clark. Clark 35 yards out. Again into a central position. Chaplin back to goal. Back to Clark. Oh, he couldn't get it under control. He lost it underneath his feet. And there is Mavadidi spinning away from two blue shirts. And Didi calmly back to the heart of defence. And Cody, and now they're spinning the back line again here, Leicester City. It's a lovely flowing counter-attacking move. Mavadidi raiding down the left-hand side. Left-handed to the penalty area, crossing in low. Cleared away. 
and out of play it goes for a Leicester throw in front of the cobbled stand on the far side there left and Leicester from defending the edge of their 18 yard box suddenly in the space of three or four passes turned defence into a sparkling attack wonderful football from Enzo Maresca's league leaders what a seven minutes of football this has been in the second half absolutely brilliant but Ipswich have to get to grips with Mavadidi they're giving him far too much time down the left hand side it's caused Ipswich all sorts of problems in the first half and he's started the second half in the same manner they need to get to grips with it or he's going to comfortably win this game for Leicester Aston Villa lead Manchester United by two goals to nil at Old Trafford tonight second half underway very shortly Manchester United will boot off at half time it's live on Talk Sport and the sports bar follows at 10 03717 Pats and Daka for Leicester central position wide left is Mavadidi always dangerous controls left hand edge of the box square back towards Daka couldn't stretch to meet it Taylor with the interception for Ipswich what a high tempo, high octane championship game this is. Taylor bursts the halfway, tracked back and fouled by Ndidi. This will be the first yellow card of the game. Out of the pocket of Sam Barrett, the referee. Eight minutes into the second half, and as you say, Darren Ambrose, it really is game on now. Good, pl good play from Jack Taylor there. Wins the ball deep into his own half and attacks the defence of Leicester, and he has to be brought down by Ndidi. Right yellow card. It was a good yellow card, actually, for, for Leicester and Ndidi, stopping that counter-attack. But it's been a fantastic start to this second half by both sides. End-to-end -end stuff. It's whoever strikes first, I guess. Home of your EFL Talk Sport 2. We're the only place to hear live and exclusive national radio commentaries from the EFL. Ball is on the halfway line for Leicester with Dewsbury Hall. Robbed of possession by Harness. Tracking back with industry to win it back. The former Burton Albion player who also plied his trade with Portsmouth where he really caught the eye. Regularly used as a substitute in his career. In fact, this is just his fourth league start of the season for Ipswich Town. Only three defeats in 42 league matches coming into Boxing Day for Kieran McKenna's Ipswich. But they do trail at home to Leicester City, who, if they were to win tonight, would be nine points clear at the top and 13 clear of Southampton in third. Here's Burgess, left-hand side for Ipswich, hoists the ball high downfield, Connor Cody with a clearing header for Leicester, the centre-half, the number four. Cody with great experience, rolls the ball back to Hermanson, the goalkeeper in purple and pink. Hermanson hasn't had a serious save to make in the game and Kieran McKenna will want that to change very quickly indeed. What, nearly 10 minutes into the second half now and Ipswich trailing 1-0. Yeah, he may look to his substitute bench very, very soon. I think Nathan Broadhead, very good goal scorer, creates opportunity as well. Ladapo potentially could come on, go in a, in a two or drop. Um, Caden Jackson to the left-hand side. Maybe Marcus Harness makes way. I think he does need to make a change. He does like to make changes around 65 minutes, 70 minutes in. So we're not long from that. Ricardo sweeping crossfield ball to the left for Leicester. Ricardo the captain. Navadidi taps it back to Fass. Leicester have possession on the halfway line. Everton against Manchester City tomorrow, 8.15 on Talk Sport. Talk Sport 2 will have Chelsea against Crystal Palace at 7.30 forward by Cody, high towards the right wing position, it's collected beautifully by Jisbury Hall who plucked it out of the air, he's been caught from behind there by Davis and the assistant puts up that chequered flag free kick to Leicester, level the edge of the 18 yard box and Davis I don't think we'll get any further punishment Leicester are going to make a change and it's Cesare Cassade on to replace the yellow carded Ndidi, that's a sensible change you feel by Enzo Maresca, Cassade who scored in the a victory over Rotherham United at the weekend, the man on load from Chelsea. As soon as um, Ndidi got the yellow card, you see him go up, warm up straight away, Cassaday. I think he's just made the, the, the choice, Enzo Maresca, straight away. Don't risk it. You're top of the league. Don't risk a, a red card and 10 men. Ndidi's done well. Done well in the first half, created some opportunities, but yeah, made way, yellow card. We've seen him on loan in the Championship at Reading, Cesare Cassaday in the past. Keenan and Dewsbury Hall will take the free kick for Leicester, just about level the edge of the 18-yard box, near side the right, five, six yards in field, Dewsbury Hall whips it in high, deep to the far post, Vestergaard onto the roof of the net, the angle against the defender was almost an impossible one, he had to really go and go back across the face of goal there, surely, Darren Ambrose, in the end, it loops harmlessly over the top. It's just a strange situation with Ipswich. They've, the Jack Taylor, Harry Clark, 
Wes Burns was all marking Vestergaard, who's a man, mountain of a, <laughs> of a man, you know. So uh, he was always going to win that. But you are right. Play it, head it across the goal and allow your teammates to try and t head it into an empty net. He went for goal and it was the wrong decision. Even three of them couldn't yeah. quite contend with it. <laughs> Dan Ambrose, formerly of Ipswich Town, of course, and Newcastle United as well. It's been given away by Ipswich as Burgess had to slide in to keep the ball from reaching Dewsbury Hall down the Leicester right. Leicester have it back with Winks, the number eight in the centre circle, and Ricardo operating in that inverted fullback role, so moving into a deep line midfield position when Leicester have possession, has tapped it back to Vestergaard, and Cody quickly to the feet of the goalkeeper, Hermanson again. Leicester, who have the best defence in the Championship this season, just 16 times they've conceded. Interception by Wolfenden on halfway. Hermanson was a long way out of his goal there, and had Wolfenden got a bit more on that, the goalkeeper scrambling back might have had a problem, but in the end he's retrieved it easily. I, th I think he didn't know Wolfenden. I think that fell to Connor Chaplin, who always loves and looks to, to shoot from the halfway line. He'd have definitely had to go. That was just a genuine clearance by Wolfenden. But you are right, he was 20 yards out. Ipswich win it back, and there'll be a yellow card out of the pocket of the referee here for Ricardo for a late challenge on Taylor, just inside Leicester City territory. Ipswich playing from right to left towards the Sir Bobby Robson stand. And of course, as ever, the supporters in the lower tier behind that goal are on their feet. Lots of blue and white banners around the goal. Come on, Ipswich is the chance around Portman Row. Underway at Old Trafford for the second half. Manchester United nil. Aston Villa 2 is the latest score. John McGinn and Leander Dendonka with first half goals. And if you see the first half goals back at some point, if you watch them at some stage, the defending for Manchester United leaves a lot to be desired. Free kick to Ipswich. Seeking equaliser, 1-0 down to Leicester. Less than an hour gone. Free kick pumped long by Davis. Poor free kick. Gathered easily by Hermanson. Hit very high and looping. Burgess jumped for it, but Hermanson, the goalkeeper, took it high in and around the penalty spots. Yeah, poor free kick by Leif Davis. He's better than that. He's got good quality on the ball, especially from set plays, and it was a, it was a poor delivery that um, Cam Burgess couldn't get on the end of. And Kladke, the Ipswich goalkeeper, had to be very careful and diligent with the ball at his feet, racing to the edge of his box. And that, you were suggesting to me, Darren Ambrose, is part of the reason, among a number as to why he's still keeping Christian Walton out of the Ipswich goal at the moment. Yeah, certainly is. I think Christian Walton's fantastic goalkeeper, done really well in the promotion season as well. Got injured, couldn't quite get back into the side, but the way Kieran likes to play, he likes his goalkeepers to be brave, like we've just seen Vladke there, play a little reverse uh, pass in the middle of the two, two centre forwards. He loves that because he loves to build out from the back. We've already seen goals, the, the, the famous Wes Burns goal, when he hit the outside of the boot, come from the uh, Bladke at the back and he's very good with his uh, with the ball at his feet lots of live football on the TalkSport network over the coming days over the rest of the festive period as Leicester look long up the far side there left hand channel towards Mavadidi but he can't keep it in play Ipswich throw down by the corner flag in that very lower tier of the cobbled stand there's a tiny fraction of Leicester supporters probably about 50 of them in that small section and then a, a much greater number high up in the second tier and it's their side who lead Leicester looking to extend their advantage at the top it'll be nine points as Ladke the Ipswich goalkeeper did remarkably to dive across to the right hand edge of his penalty area I think with his head he stopped it going behind for a corner originally <laughs> I was looking from behind the pole Darren Ambrose yeah. in front of us but I, just, I tell I, you he stopped it with his head I don't know why he's done that he could have just used his hand showboating but he did he stopped it with his head <laughs> It was going to be a corner, I think. It wasn't a pass back, but it would have been a corner. But he used his head, then used his hands. So, strange bit of goalkeeping, but it worked. He forgot he was a goalkeeper <laughs> for a second. Maybe he didn't realise that he was inside the box as he prevented it. <laughs> Honestly, it was, that was outstanding bit of goalkeeping. <laughs> There's another reason why he's still in the team. Harness has just uh, been yellow carded for a foul on Winks in the centre circle. I'm just wondering, Joe, like, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm looking at him now, I'm thinking, is he thinking, why did I do that? <laughs> why have I just headed it and then picked it up? Goalkeepers are crazy, aren't they? <laughs> Ipswich nil, Leicester 1. Over an hour gone here. Leicester, the league leaders in possession. Kelechi Inacho being ready to come on for them. They've given it away. Chapman's gone for goal from Miles.
ball's out and Hermanson had to parry the ball away. He was off his line there, Hermanson. Chaplin went for goal from about 10 yards inside the Leicester half. Great vision from Connor Chaplin, who has put his head to his hands. Hermanson backpedalling, got a touch to tip it away. Fortunate the goalkeeper there that Chaplin didn't get a little more loft on it as Leicester bring on Ian Acho for Pats and Dacca. Honestly, I, t- I told you, Joe. I told you when Wolfenden had that clearance and he was off his line, I said, Connor Chaplin, I thought well, he will be looking at that. He'll know soon as he wins the ball, can he do it? You know what? The most disappointed person in this stadium will be Connor Chaplin because he's better than that. That's an open goal. The, uh, Hermanson is 20 yards off his line. He should have scored there, I, I feel, for someone of his quality. He tries that every game, by the way. And he's hit the bar, he's almost scored. He is, you can tell he's so disappointed he didn't get that on target. Ian Acho then for Dakar for Leicester City. That's the first real save that Hermanson has had to make in the game so far. Ipswich nil, Leicester 1. It remains on Talk Sport 2. Ian Acho onto the field, as I say, not scored since October. Here we are ticking towards the end of 2023. Ipswich at home to QPR next. Leicester away at Cardiff City to finish the year. The ball is on the halfway line with Morsi. Out wide to the right-hand side now and Burns. Burns immediately, old-fashioned winger, driving forward up the right-hand channel, taking on fast and then cutting in field, playing it back to Morsi. Morsi whips in across to the far post. Davis coming in, back across the face of goal, headed away by Vestergaard. Davis has been hurt, he's gone down, he must have been caught late. Davis is off the field and then Chaplin, tackled by Fatawu. The referee says play on. That's got the Ipswich fans really riled up now and Harness has got to be careful. Harness lunging in on Fatawu who goes down and Harness is already on a yellow card and the referee Sam Barrett is going to be lenient here and just give Leicester City the free kick but before that Ipswich felt there were maybe two fouls one on Chaplin and one on Davis I mean lenient's not the word Joe I think it was 100% a foul on Connor Chaplin just on the edge of the box just at an angle 100% by Fatawu and then Marcus Harness tried to stop the counter-attack as you said and, and brought him down and can find himself lucky that he didn't get a, another yellow card there now Leicester on the burst with Winks darting up the middle and into it which territory tracked all the way by Morsi foul by Morsi he was sandwiching between two blue and white shirts there and Ipswich supporters on their feet around Portman Road and Increasingly frustrated with the referee. We're 19 minutes into the second half. Leicester lead by a goal to nil. And a second goal here for Leicester would surely finish Ipswich off. I'll be very surprised if Marcus Harness isn't substituted very, very quickly because I think one more chance, he's lucky not to have seen red there, one more opportunity and the ref will give him a second yellow card. I can see him coming off very soon. Manchester United still trail 2-0 at home to Aston Villa. They thought they were they were back into the game, Eric Ten Hag's team, but Alejandro Garnacho had a goal ruled out for offside after a VAR check. It's live on Talk Sport right now, followed by the Sports Bar with Jason Cundy and Jermaine Pennant. We brought you eight live games today on the network, and you can have your say on well each and every one of them if you really want to. Or anything else that has happened across the footballing world this afternoon and into the evening. Everton against Manchester City tomorrow on Talk Sport. Chelsea Palace Talk Sport 2. Davis Ritzwich through the middle, up to the edge of the D, shoots left footed, gathered by the goalkeeper, took a deflection, and that took all the sting out of it. Cesare Cassade tracking back. Kieran McKenna applauds. Much more gusto and intent about Ipswich in the second half, but they still can't really carve out that clear chance they need for an equaliser. Yeah, I mean, they're making Herman some work now, as they didn't do that in the first half. He's, he's having to make a couple of saves. Great marauding run by Leaf. Davis on the left-hand side, just as you said, Cassaday, brilliant defending, just stopped the shot from reaching um, Hermanson with any venom, any power, just ended up in his arms. But a lot better this half by Ipswich. This one of 450 commentaries on the Talk Sport Network this season. Premier League, the EFL, Champions League, Europa League and more. WSL, Euro 2024 next summer. We've got it all. 
Here's Wolfenden for Ipswich, deep inside his own half of the field. Lovely work by uh, Morsi, Wolfenden and Clark as they try to play the ball out of the defensive third. Burgess inside his own box, out to the left-back position and Davis, good first touch. And then the ball in field is lovely to find Taylor. Taylor picks up a pocket of space, he's evaded. Cassidy for now, wide left to Harness. Taylor was body-checked by Cassidy, referee sensibly allows play to go on. Harness goes on the outside, near side the left away from Mercado. He's now level with the edge of the 18-yard box. Ipswich are 1-0 down as we tick towards the final quarter of the game. Davis. Early ball in from the left. Taylor controls and shoots and he's hammered it into Winks. The ball spirals up into the dark night sky. Players looking left and right. Nobody knows where it is. It's dropped down just inside the Leicester half and Ipswich will come again. Burgess infield to Morsi. Everybody in those orange Leicester shirts behind the ball now. Ipswich are starting to flood forward with greater regularity. Clark just inside the Leicester half. Nodges it wide right to Burns. One-on-one -on -one with Fass. Burns fancies his chances, crosses away from Jackson. Fatou chested it down. Whoa, what about that for composure? To chest it down and clear. And now Mavadini has poked it onto Iheanacho on the break. Iheanacho's controlled. Dewsbury Hall makes the run through the middle. Out comes Latke, gets there first. And Latke hammers it clear. What an amazing passage of play. Ipswich nil, Leicester 1. I mean, Fatua in the end of in his own penalty box, chesting it down and clearing it under the pressure that, that they've been on. It's been all Ipswich for the last 15 minutes, so you're going to have to say that. But they look uh, dangerous on the counter attack, Leicester. Ian Acho come on now. Mavadidi is still very, very dangerous when he gets the ball. Not had it recently, but, you know, they're strong going forward. But it's all been Ipswich. These two sides came into the weekend as the joint highest scorers in the championship. Now 48 goals in the league for Leicester, 47 for Ipswich Town. Remember, they've scored in each of their last 27 home league games. They usually find a way to score at home, but they haven't so far. It is more than 20 minutes to go. 22 plus stoppage time to be exact. Fast in the left-back position for Leicester. Plays it back to Vestergaard. He's midway inside his own half. Forward to Cassidy. Lovely touch square to Winks. Back to Cassidy with the gloves on. Cassidy looks to smuggle it forward towards Iheanacho. Under pressure from Morsi tearing forward. And it's floated downfield towards Iheanacho. And Burgess let it bounce. And it's gone through to Haladki, the goalkeeper. Got a good starting position on the edge of his penalty area. The problem that Ipswich have is that Leicester looks so capable of scoring on the counter-attack. And they have to try and manage that threat pretty much against Darren until the very end of the game because you just cannot leave yourself open against Leicester at the back. No, absolutely. And we've got Ian Acho who's just come on. Dewsby Hall, Mavadidi, Cassidy just in that number 10 slot. Very, very talented. And they can score a goal out of nothing. We know that. So as much as Ipswich are dominating this second half at the moment, one opportunity and it will be 2-0. We, we, we know that can happen to Leicester. And as you said, you need to be on it from first to last minute. Forward by Burgess into the midway point of his own half, given away by Harness. Harness then manages to retrieve the ball, rattling against the shields of Iheanacho to win it back. Now Clark on the counter. Harness little touch floating into the right-hand side and Burns. Burns tried to dart in field despite the overlapping run of Clark. It's been cleared away by Leicester only as far as Burns. He's about 15 yards into Leicester territory. Morsi in the centre circle. Square ball to Burgess. Everybody inside the Leicester half, bar the Ipswich goalkeeper, Hladke. Ipswich nil, Leicester 1. Just over 20 minutes of normal time to go. Chaplin through the middle to Jackson. Back to goal. Back to Connor. Chaplin opens up. Good save to his right by Hermanson. A flying stop to turn it behind. Now he's really been worked, the Leicester goalkeeper. Ipswich had another corner. Connor Chaplin, poor first half, been brilliant this second half. And again, a little one-two on his lesser favoured foot, the right foot. Great strike, good save from Hermanson. Corner number nine in the game for Ipswich, 1-0 down. Whipped in left-footed by Davis, headed away at the near post by Vestergaard. Back out wide to Davis, he's plucked it out of the air. Down by the corner flag, he scampers infield to the corner of the penalty area. Back it goes to Morsi. Morsi looks up and lays it square. Wolfenden urge to shoot, floats it to the left. Headed back across goal by Davis, could drop in the penalty area. Here's Chaplin shooting again, left-footed. And that's rising, and that's over the top. But Ipswich starting to grow closer towards an equaliser. You can hear 
hear it. You can hear the atmosphere. It is all Lipswich at the moment. We've spoken about how dangerous Leicester can be on the counter-attack, but Connor Chaplin has come alive in this second half. And again, this time on his favourite foot, on the edge of the box, just puts the ball over the bar. But the right-footed effort, 1-2 with Caden Jackson, got it on his right foot. Great strike, Hermanson, good save. It's all Lipswich, but like we said, they can be dangerous, Leicester. Leicester having to be resolute, but they can do that. And here is Ricardo popping it through the gap towards Winks, who darts over the halfway line and suddenly orange shirts are flooding forward. Winks out to the near side of the right. Fatawu controls. He's about to live with the edge of the 18-yard box. Fatawu with the pink boots on. Just rolls it back to Ricardo. Ricardo to Winks. Ricardo split the gap there between the midfield and the back line of Ipswich with a perfect pass. And Leicester couldn't quite in the end make anything of it. Here's Dewsbury Hall, midway inside his own half, just rolls it neatly back to Cody. You just have to admire the quality of the football on show from Leicester City and the bravery of their play and the fact that Maresca's done this in the space of six months at the club. Wolfenden plays it back to Hladki and that's certainly not knocking the job, the amazing job that Kieran McKenna's done at Ipswich as well. The praise for the two managers who are two of the absolute best, maybe the two best in the championship, you'd have to say. What, what Leicester do and what they're good at and we've seen even the, the pressure that Ipswich are putting them on as soon as Leicester get the ball they don't mind being patient they keep it for 10, 15, 20 passes just to frustrate Ipswich Chaplin out to the left at the right rather and Burns Burns in a race to keep it in play he hasn't been able to do so there goes that lime green flag of the assistant to signal it has gone out in front of the cobbled stand the far side Kieran McKenna patrolling the touchline so too the Leicester boss Enzo Moresca Ipswich nil Leicester one it remains have we seen the last of the score or could there be another goal or two in this one? Ford hard in the middle by Cody to Cassade, who's chested it down. Cassade to the penalty area. Cassade has chipped it into the box towards Dewsbury Hall instead of going for goal. And Burgess got in front of Dewsbury Hall to shrug him aside. Radke was able to claim. Leicester find the key to the door in one or two passes some of the time. Vestigard has fouled Chaplin. Free kick to Ipswich, just shy of halfway. Just two better options there for, for Cassade. One, the main option, shoot. You're, you're, you're 18 yards out, you versus Vladki, shoot. The other one was Mav Mavididi as well on the left-hand side. He chose a weird chip to the far post to try and get Drewsby Hall in, and it come to nothing. And then Connor Chaplin was brought down in the middle of the park. And it's again Ipswich on the attack. 17 minutes of normal time to go now on Talk Sport 2. Morsi, the number five, the Ipswich captain. Midway inside his own half of the field. Out to the right and Clark. Clark back to the halfway line and Wolfenden. Faced up by a sea of Leicester players in front of him, the centre half. Square ball to Burgess. Manchester United with a goal back at home to Aston Villa. They trail by two goals to one United. Alejandro Garnacho has got them back into the game. It's live on TalkSport right now. Be sure to download the TalkSport app. You can swipe between both stations at your leisure. Harness, left wing position for Ipswich. Low ball infield, intercepted by Cody. Great interception by Cody. Very clever pass by Harness towards Chaplin and Jackson. Chaplin applauded the intent and now he asks for more noise from the home crowd. It's an Ipswich throw. Five yards from the corner flag, taken by Davis, infield to Taylor. Taylor trying to wriggle away from Fatou, he's done that. Corner of the penalty area now. Taylor facing goal. He's had to go back out left to the near side, and Davis, who rattles it off the shins of Dewsbury Hall, that's another Ipswich throw. 1-0 down, Ipswich. Almost perfect pass by Harness there. Didn't, didn't rush the cross, he just hit a hard and low one. Just intercepted by Vestergaard. Cody, I think it was, in the end. Otherwise, it was reaching Caden Jackson. But now it's Lester on the counter. Mavadidi attacking Clark. 1v1 through the middle towards Caden. Dewsbury Hall! Oh, he was brought down there, Dewsbury Hall, surely! No penalty given by the referee! Leicester City staff can't believe it on the near side touchline. Jisbury Hall was certainly caught by Burgess there. I think that's a penalty, Joe. Just looking at it here, I think it's a penalty. He's tried to shield him, Cam Burgess. Tried to shield uh, Jewsbury Hall away, but he, he got there and he definitely he, he connected with his foot. For me, on the initial viewing, that was a penalty. What a brilliant game of championship football this is. Jewsbury Hall back on his feet and Leicester streaming forward again, playing from right to left. Cassidy's footed it to the left-hand side and Steffi Mavadidi. Mavadidi's level with the edge of the box. Backwards now to Fass. And for once, the pace of the game is slowed. Ipswich nil, Leicester 1, 15 minutes to go. And we don't have a monitor in our commentary position here at Portman Road, but I'm sure that certainly Enzo Maresca would love to see that potential penalty incident again. I have to say, I really did think 
Burgess just, just took the legs of Dewsbury Hall. Yeah, the initial viewing. He, he, he tried to shield it back to Vladke, but Dewsbury had got there in front of him. So then he had to change his plan and it looked like he just cleaned him out. So for me, that was a penalty. Davis on the halfway line for Ipswich. Ball in field towards Jackson. Robbed the possession. Good tackle that by Cody. Referee says play on. Two players collided. Now Cassidy charging forward over the halfway line. A wide left to Mavadidi. Mavadidi on the corner of the penalty area here for Leicester. He's beyond one. He's nearly beyond two. It's dropped towards Cassidy. Tried the shot. Blocked off by Wolford and hacked up into the air by Morsi. All action this at Portman Road in the second half. It's been a superb second half. Neither team has had a, another goal to show for it. Leicester have the one goal we've seen so far. Mavadidi in the first half, which was almost tepid by comparison. Here's Cody on the halfway line. So Ipswich, your old club, Darren, might have got away with one there. I'd like to see it again. I certainly would. We haven't had the opportunity to see it again. But for initial viewing, I thought it was a penalty. It wasn't given. Uh, there was a potential shout for a penalty for Ipswich on Leif Davies uh, about 15 minutes ago. Yeah. wasn't given also. So maybe that just evened itself out. I think Ipswich are about to make a triple substitution, it looks like, bringing on a couple of forward players. Broadhead and Hutchinson maybe being readied here for Ipswich Town. Ricardo's got the ball back for Leicester City and now winks from the lip of the centre circle out to the left and Cassidy who's looked lively since taking to the field here is Fass Fass just inside the Ipswich half at walking pace now the game has been slowed Vestergaard to Fass on the halfway line again back to Vestergaard once more the Leicester lead by that goal to nil Luongo, Broadhead and Hutchinson all ready to come on for Ipswich Town very shortly three players who've made tremendous impacts at the club in their own ways. Positive substitutions they will be. They are being ready. They're, they're just on the sideline waiting to come. Maybe Marcus Harness, uh, Connor Chaplin potentially going off. Jack Taylor, I'd say, would be the other one. Remains to be seen. We're going to see in a couple of minutes. But positive substitutions by Kieran McKenna and Ipswich. Twelve and a half minutes to go. All is just inside Ipswich territory. Shepherded back to the goalkeeper by Fatawu. Every single Leicester City player on the field is confident with the ball at their feet. Ricardo back to the goalkeeper Hermanson again. They just frustrate you when they get the ball. They can just play, like we said, 15, 20 passes just to slow the game down and kill all the momentum that Ipswich have. They're very, very comfortable in the ball. Hermanson, the goalkeeper, forward to Winks, right through the middle to Cassidy. Cassidy couldn't lay it square to Iheanacho. He nearly did, but for the tremendous interception by Wolfenden. And they can play through you in multiple ways, Leicester City. Good dink by the goalkeeper, Hladke, over the top of two on-rushing Leicester players. But Clark can't keep it in play and that's going to be a throw to Leicester in a moment but here come the changes I think Jonas Atgun is ready to come on for Leicester City as well so here come that raft of changes Hutchinson, Luongo and Broadhead coming on Burns is the first player to leave the field Harness going off as well and that's Taylor coming off for Ipswich two are those the three changes you would have expected? Yeah, I'd say so. I said Connor Chaplin potentially, but he can always score a goal out of nothing, Connor Chaplin. So he's definitely the right one out of him and Wes Burns to, to keep on the pitch. They're very positive substitutions. Nathan Broadhead, great um, form this season, as is Luongo when he has the opportunity. He has this partnership with Sammy Morsey in the middle of midfield. And Murray, Murray Hutchinson, very, very positive. He'll get the ball. He'll attack the, the defenders of Leicester City, Valtfest and Vestergaard. They'll have something different to deal with now because he can go either way. Here comes the Galatasaray Loni, Yunus Akgun, a Turkish player, on to replace Kian and Dewsbury Hall, who's leaving the field now. And Dewsbury Hall taking the long walk towards the near side. And the boos from the, Ips the Ipswich fans will tell you that. 1 0 to Leicester City, and Dewsbury Hall glaring towards the fans away to the left in the Sir Bobby Robson stand. Uh, the, the supporters may have seen it as a dive uh, at Jewsby Hall it sounds like it with the reception he's getting the boos he's getting as he's coming off but fantastic talent Jewsby Hall and he's, he's been key to Leicester City being at the top of the division um, in real key and key for to keep him at the football club because he'd had many people wanting him in the Premier League and Leicester throw on that far side the left wing position has come to nothing it's hammered clear by Harry Clark for Ipswich Jackson can't really hold the ball up effectively enough for Ipswich here just over 10 minutes of normal time remaining. 
as the team in second tries to find an equaliser against the team that lead the league table. And Ipswich, the gap to Southampton in third, will be four points if it stays like this. And suddenly the nerves really starting to grow in Suffolk. Leicester heading nine points clear at the top and 13 clear of third as it stands. Vestergaard's back pass a little short. Hermanson forward straight to Jackson. He's giving it away. Jackson away from Ricardo. Edge of the D. Jackson, can he get his shot in? He does. It's blocked by Fast. Loose ball drops towards Luongo. He can't control. Little touch by Davis with his back to goal. Scrambled up into the air by Fatawu. A rare error from the Leicester City goalkeeper Hermanson and it nearly led to a big Ipswich chance at goal. Yeah, Caden Jackson I think chose the wrong option again. It was brilliant interception from him. Good play, good strength to get away from the, the Leicester midfielder uh, and he tried to shoot when he probably could have slipped Amari Hutchins on the right hand side he would have been in on goal but you know he's a centre forward he's always he's always going to take the shot on and it was good play all round again it's all Ipswich Talk Sport 2 and it's still 1-0 to Leicester offside against Hutchinson now that was pretty sloppy from the Chelsea Loney coming back from an offside position we're being told by people who've seen replays of the penalty incidents involving Dewsbury Hall and Burgess was that it should have been a Leicester penalty and that was certainly what it looked like mm. at the time but then as you say Darren Ipswich might say well they could have had a penalty yeah, themselves yeah. forward by Hermanson high up the middle the Leicester goalkeeper the header away by Burgess it's dropped on the halfway line infield by Davis to Broadhead Broadhead eight goals so far this season on by Morsi to Chaplin lovely defence splitting pass Chaplin wide to the right hand side it's Amari Hutchinson the right winger driving forward and crossing blocked on the slide by Fast. you have to credit Fast for an excellent performance tonight but Leicester still got work to do ten corners now for Ipswich one nil down eight minutes plus stoppage time to go he's defended really well Fast. he's had Wes Burns to deal with he's gone off he's now Amari Hutchinson to deal with and he is very positive player Amari Hutchinson on loan from Chelsea this time went on the outside good tackle corner whipped in high by Davis into the near post headed away by Inacho loose ball has dropped down to Hutchinson a couple of juggles of the ball and he's knocked it straight out of play under the challenge of Mavadidi the <laughs> Ipswich players were hopefully looking towards the assistant thinking is he going to be fooled by our appeals but he wasn't and it's no. a goal kick to Leicester no he, uh, he's missed a stonewall penalty for me um, like I said we've not seen the replay we, people that have seen it have said it is a, is a stonewall he's missed that but he's had a relatively good game the referee he almost lost control at a point in the in the first half but he's had a good game here come Ipswich with Chaplin 25 yards out onto Broadhead edge of the area Broadhead trying to find space for a shot cleared away by Fass only half away by Leicester City Atkun then gets the loose ball Atkun tearing forward and finding Harry Winks Winks blocked off though by the retreating Luongo Ipswich have it back again Broadhead gets a sight of goal oh but he can't not make Vestigard Vestigard stood tall and strong to win it back for Leicester amazing game at Portman Road and now here come Leicester on the counter again with the seemingly tireless Mavadidi surges between two blue and white shirts he's midway inside the Ipswich half not beyond the third in the shape of Luongo though and here from right to left come Ipswich again Luongo great way to pass down the right to Hutchinson Fass is there again sliding in Fass he got a lot of criticism in the Premier League last season he's been brilliant tonight in this biggest game of the championship season so far yeah he's been absolutely brilliant once again Luongo tried to play in be between him and the centre half for Amari Hutchinson and he won that race great defending once again from Bout Fass now then, tangle the legs far side, throw to Ipswich. Level with the edge of the 18-yard box. They're coming towards the Sir Bobby Robson stand in there. Waves Ipswich now in the second half. Will it help lead them to an equaliser? The noise of the home fans. They've got a long throw here, and Burgess has come forward for it. The centre half, it's hurled into the box by Clark and headed away by Fats. How do you do that? It's not, it, it wasn't even a long throw got everyone up and he didn't even reach the penalty box Luongo midway inside the Leicester half just over five minutes of normal time remaining high towards Burgess won the header to knock it down and it's gathered by goalkeeper Hermanson and it's now 2-2 at Old Trafford Manchester United 2 Aston Villa 2 and both for Alejandro Garnacho. so from 2-0 down Eric Ten Hag's side have rescued themselves some and, team talk uh, yeah, well yes quite possibly 
closing stages will be on Talk Sport. They kicked off 15 minutes later than ours. Ipswich looking for an equaliser against Leicester. Hutchinson. Now, was he fouled on the corner of the box? No. Ipswich fans on their feet to appeal all around the ground. But Sam Barrett, the referee, is unmoved. And Fass steps out of defence with authority for Leicester. Poked forward by Cassidy. Poor ball. Leicester holding on to the ball. Much less now, Darren, it feels like to me. Yeah, they're trying to play a little bit direct and there's a little bit of sloppiness creeping into to Leicester. A little bit of nervousness, I think, coming into the last five minutes of normal time. I think Ipswich have dominated this half and it's caused a little bit of edginess to Leicester. More live football from the FL on Friday. Southampton against Plymouth and West Brom against Leeds on the Talk Sport Network. Here is Ricardo. Midway inside his own half for Leicester. Popped back by Vestigard to Cody. We're in the 86th minute. Ipswich have certainly created more in the second half, but Hermanson, one good save to deny Chaplin. That aside, they haven't had enough on target maybe in the game, Ipswich. Yeah. Freddie Ladapo is going to come on very shortly. I wonder whether that'll be a change of shape or maybe does he take off the sub? Jackson, Jackson has got it though. Via deflection to win it back for Ipswich. Corner of the penalty area is Chaplin. Jackson's touch. Broadhead is in the box. He can't get beyond Cody. Cody stood tall. Might have been a handball by an Ipswich player in there as well. Leicester break away out of defence. Cody finding Cassidy. And now Mavadidi fancies his chances, but he can't get beyond Clark. His touch was heavy. Four ball out of play by Wolfenden. That'll allow Leicester some momentum back into the game as they can slow the play down. And here comes the Ipswich change. Ladapo on, and yes, Jackson coming off the sub is sub. Yeah, it's never nice, it's never nice, but look, they'll understand it's for the team. Ladapo will, Ladapo will give them something extra, something different once again, a bit of fresh legs, and I've already said, you can't take Connor Chaplin off. He's the talisman, he's the one that can create a chance out of nothing. Well, I also think, in fairness to Jackson, he has played the best part of an hour, ultimately, so it's not an indignity to be taken off. No in these circumstances and he's worked very hard for the team but it's Ladapo the number nine onto the field now this is his 300th senior appearance of his career and Ipswich are the 17th club of his career wow <laughs> a busy career he's known as a journeyman uh, yeah Luongo on the halfway line wide left to Broadhead Broadhead is taking on Ricardo here Ipswich nil Leicester one a thrilling end to the game on Talk Sport 2 Two and a half minutes of normal time left. Davis early ball to Ladapo with his back to goal. The number nine, he holds up play neatly. He darts down the inside left channel, but Winks gets across. And so composed in there defending Leicester City. Winks has, well, I thought threw himself to ground a bit there to buy a free kick from the referee, and he, the referee did give the free kick. Yeah, he certainly bought that. I don't think there was any touch at all. We've got the perfect view here, and he did. He just ran in front of him as if he'd been clipped, fell over, and he's won his, his team a, 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 right, a free kick it right down in their own penalty box just to take a little bit more pressure off them. They just can't get the final um, through ball, the final shot right, Ipswich, at the moment. They've done everything correct apart from the final thing. Nathan Broadhead's a little bit guilty of trying to do a little bit too much as opposed to just shooting a couple of minutes to go. Leicester can do the ugly side of the game well as well, and that is what, I guess... Potential title winners, promotion winners, that's what you have to do as well, Darren Ambrose. Absolutely, and they've got experienced players. Connor Cody, Harry Winks there. Oh, but here's a chance for Luongo, through the middle to Chaplin, Chaplin on to Broadhead, Broadhead angle tight, cuts in field, oh, he couldn't take the ball with him. And Ricardo was back, and in the end, gets the congratulations from Cody and his goalkeeper. Ricardo shepherded the ball out of play for a goal kick. Ipswich were through there. They were virtually through, but from the angle, the tight angle, Broadhead tried to jink back in field and then forgot to take the ball with him and there's only a minute of normal time to go. He, he's got to shoot for me, Joe. He's got to just get it on his foot, weak or strong foot, whatever it is, and just shoot. Hit hit the ball. I've just said he's Nathan Broadhead, fantastic finisher, both feet. He's been guilty of trying a little bit too much and he's done that once again. And now Mavadidi at the other end looking to punish Ipswich Town onto Iheanacho. Too much on that ball towards Iheanacho. He'll sprint towards it can't keep it in play throw to Ipswich by their own corner flag we're heading towards stoppage time I know the home crowd will want plenty of that there are one or two empty blue seats starting to appear at Portman Road but the vast vast majority will be staying put until the end it's the kind of game that well I don't want it to end at all it's so exciting to watch it's been a fantastic game this second half has been brilliant the first half you'd have to say Leicester rightly got the 
went in at half time in the lead apart from the last five six minutes of the half where Ipswich come into into the match but it's been all Ipswich really with Leicester looking really dangerous on the counter attack Mavadidi in particular but five added what a minutes. game five added minutes at the end of the game Here's Luongo near side the left for Ipswich, midway inside the Leicester half. Ipswich nil, Leicester one. So Leicester will be nine points clear as it stands and 13 clear of third position. There'd be a gap of just four points between Ipswich in second and Southampton in third. Jackson with his back to goal, uh, Ladapo with his back to goal, the number nine, having replaced Jackson. Ladapo on the field. It's gone wide to the right-hand side and Hutchinson taking on fast, skipping beyond fast. He's got the pace to dart to the dead ball line. Hutchinson races into the area, cuts it back. Ladapo! Deflected behind by Fass. Fass again in the way for Leicester. And they all celebrate as if they'd scored. It's another corner, nearly a minute through five added. Brilliant by Amari Hutchinson there. I said he's direct, he's quick, he attacks the fullback. They played a short corner now. To Hutchinson. Hutchinson again showing the trickle week, but then Mavadidi got back to block him off. Why didn't they just pump that ball into the box, Darren Ambrose? So, such a strange a decision. I just don't understand when teams do this. You're, you, you've got the momentum. Get the big players forward. Even Vladke was looking to potentially come forward because it's important. Try and get a draw. If you're gonna, if you're gonna lose, lose two 0 Try and go for the draw. That's what you want to happen. That that chance there that just happened for Ladapo. It was Kuzvalt Fest was chasing. Uh, Mamari Hutchinson back he ended up in the penalty box and then ended up getting the block from Ladapo it's been a fantastic match particularly this half 90 seconds of the five added have been played we shall not be moved single Leicester City fans heading for their 20th league win of the season from 24 games that's incredible it's incredible and you can see why nobody can match that consistency it would seem header away by Fass for Leicester so resolute in this second half, Leicester up to this point. Cassaday's held the ball up midway inside his own half. Infield to Winks and the courage on the ball of Winks and Cassaday. As Leicester go back to the right back position and Fatawu. Many players in that position at 1-0 up in stoppage time would have just hammered it upfield. But Leicester are a different breed. They keep possession. Although Fatawu has gone cross field, risky ball, headed on by Fass and it's one back by Cassaday. It's just calm, it's casual. They're all fantastic on the ball. They're all brave to have the ball as well, even under this pressure. Here's Hutchinson though. Ipswich have it midway inside the Leicester half. Hutchinson heading for the corner of the penalty area. Tackling back is Mavadidi. Leicester with virtually everybody back behind the ball. Halfway through five added. 1-0 to Leicester. But here's Morsi for Ipswich shooting. Deflected! It's in! It's in! Ipswich are level! In stoppage time! Portman Road goes mad! And that is the definition of a captain's goal from Sam Morsi. did we say Joe get the ball on your foot and put your laces through it doesn't matter if it goes in first time top corner trickles in takes a deflection Sammy Morsey got the ball on his foot and hit the shot something that no Ipswich players really done in this second half and it has to be said deserve deserve the equaliser and what might happen in the last 90 seconds Leicester on the attack Mavadidi can't keep it in play throw to Ipswich right back position no which deserve for how they played in the second half they were not to be denied Darren Ambrose absolutely huge deflection it has to be said but we spoke about Nathan Broadhead not hitting the shot trying too much Sammy Morsey one thing on his mind got it on his left foot which is weak foot and just hit the shot captain's goal deflected okay uh, I felt I felt for Hermanson because he was wrong-footed. He didn't know what to do, but absolutely brilliant. He's scored some crucial goals, Sam Morsi, this season. And he's got another. It's 1-1. Ipswich 1, Leicester 1. 45 seconds to go. Ipswich have the ball just inside the Leicester half. Morsi, right of centre. Hutchinson, little flick towards the right. Oh, good play by Fass. Brilliant he's been. To knock it off Chaplin and win Fass has throw. been absolutely brilliant defending. And it's harsh that he's going to be on a team that isn't going to win this match uh, at the moment. Well, you never know because here come Leicester down the far side. They're left with Mavadidi. The tackle coming in from Morsi. Throw to Leicester. There's only 20 seconds left. There might be a bit more added on. 
because of the goal and the celebrations that followed. All eyes on Sam Barrett, the referee. A throw from Fass towards the edge of the area. Ian Acho controls on the corner of the box, but he's surrounded by blue shirts and Ipswich clear. Long by Hutchinson to the halfway line. It's 1-1 on Talk Sport 2. Cody back to the goalkeeper, Hermanson. He's under pressure. Hermanson will hammer it forward, high up the right-hand channel. Fatawu is chasing it. Goalkeeper back pedalling. Fatawu trying to reach it down the dead ball line. Burgess with the touch. He's knocked it out of play. That's a throw to Leicester. Right by the corner flag. We've already had 20 seconds over the five added. Ipswich won, Leicester won. And a throw to Leicester City on the near side. Fatima is going to leave it for Ricardo here. Just slowing the game down, Leicester City. Incredible noise after that Ipswich equaliser. Rarely will you see an equaliser celebrated as raucously as that. And that might be the last noticeable action of the game. Leicester still waiting to take the throw. Ricardo goes back to Cody. Cody's got two in the middle to aim, but he's gone back to the halfway line and Vestergaard. The referee blows the final whistle. Wow, listen to the noise of the Ipswich fans. Celebrating a draw almost as though it's a victory, but it will feel like a moral victory for Kieran McKenna's team because they have pegged back Leicester City in stoppage time as this enthralling clash of the top two in the championship ends what a piece. This sort of game, this sort of second half is exactly why we love the EFL and why we're your home of the EFL on the TalkSport network. So the gap at the end of the night remains as it was before the game started. Six points between the two teams and Ipswich move five ahead of Southampton in third now after that dramatic late equaliser from the captain Sam Morsey shooting from the edge of the box big deflection on it wrong foot of the goalkeeper Matt Hermanson to give Ipswich what you have to say was a deserved leveller though Leicester having taken the lead through Steffi Mavadidi in the first half a fine finish it was too will certainly point to the penalty that never was at 1-0 in the second Jewsbury Hall was taken out by Burgess the referee didn't give a spot kick and maybe Enzo Maresca will have words to say about that after the full time whistle here but the noise when that Ipswich equaliser went in really was a joy to behold and these two will keep tussling towards the top of the championship as the season goes on make no mistake about it it was a game that you just didn't want to end but it has finished and it's finished Ipswich 1 Leicester 1 Thank you very much Joe Shannon alongside Darren Ambrose there and Darren I was going to say to you that Ipswich are going to feel really hard done by if they didn't get something out of this and I've had to completely change my plan with that late goal because as you said in the commentary it was it was all them in the second half yeah. and they, if they'd come away and they hadn't at least scored a goal they would have been absolutely incredibly hard done by wouldn't they absolutely i said i said Ipswich will score a goal yeah. tonight they they left it to right to the very end and it has to be said if they didn't get something out of this game they would feel hard done by but you can point to that penalty not given on Dewsbury Hall, Cam Burgess. I think Leicester will be looking at they may be a little bit hard done by. That would have been 2-0. That could have ended the, the match there and then. But Ipswich were sensational in the second half. First half, I thought they were poor. I didn't think they got into the game at all. Second half, or in the, well, the last five minutes of the first and the second half, it was all them. And the captain, Sammy Morsey, popped up at the end and, and it hit the equaliser. And the noise erupted. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what what is said about that penalty because the, you know, the game was so frantic throughout the entirety of the match, actually, not just the second half, that it took so long for anyone to see a replay. I know that you didn't see a replay for ages. We didn't see a replay here in the studio either. But when you watch that replay... There can't be many arguments about that being a penalty, surely. Well, well we've, we've actually not seen the replay here at all, but from the initial viewing, I just looked at it. Cam Burgess tried to shield it back to Vladke, yeah. but Kieran Drewsby Hall got in front of him. He ended up having to change his plan and try and pull him away, and I think he's clipped his legs. That's what I see. And people that I know that have seen the replay said it's a stonewall penalty. So, yeah. for that matter, you'd say that Enzo Moresco and Leicester will feel hard done by. But you can look at it a point at the end of the day is probably a good result for both sides Leicester stay six points clear and Ipswich stop well after the, the, the walloping they took off Leeds it's mm. been a fantastic result for them yeah taking two two losses in a row and obviously not no wins in three would have been uh, would have been really really tricky there uh, to have that sort of double whammy there and obviously with Southampton winning uh, earlier on 5-0 against uh, Swansea yeah. important for them to put a bit of distance between them so five points ahead there with a six point gap 
Ipswich play QPR on Friday, so a very, very quick turnaround. But surely when they're, you know, welcoming another home, it's another home game, welcoming a team down the bottom, QPR, they're going to be full of confidence after this now. Whereas, you know, if they hadn't got that goal, then they're, you know, there might have been a sort of, sort of signs of a little shakiness. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was going to be looking at the positives for Ipswich at the end if they were to lose this mm. games, and the positives would be they now take on QPR and Stoke in the next two, two potential winnable, winnable games. I know Stoke have improved of late um, under Schumacher, so I think they're winnable games for them so uh, that was the positives I was going to take from from that from an Ipswich perspective but the fact they got the equaliser right at the end it will feel like a victory they're doing their, their, their lap of lap of appreciation with it for the supporters so that will feel like a victory and they'll go into the game on Friday against QPR full of confidence that they'll get a win yeah, only uh, four more games to go until we see this match again, actually. 22nd of January is the reverse fixture in Leicester. I mean, if it's anywhere near as good as this game's going to be, uh, has been, sorry, it's going to be uh, another appointment to Leicester, isn't it? Yeah, to be honest, we, we sat here, me and Joe, and we were talking about this, and I've done a lot of work for Ipswich this season, yeah. so I've seen a lot of the championship, and this, in terms of quality, was probably the best I've seen this season. And you'd, if you look at it in that case, you'd say one or a point apiece, was a good point for, for both sides. Two of the top teams in this division, alongside Southampton and, Le and Leeds. But I think if you're a Southampton supporter, watching that right at the end, you'd be gutted that they just equalised there. But great, great game. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Yeah, and we, you know, at the same time over on TalkSport, we've got Manchester United coming back from 2-0 down at home to Aston Villa, currently leading 3-2. I think United at this pretty much exactly the same time should have also had a penalty there. So sort of double penalty whammy there, but no VAR in the championship right now. So uh, they couldn't look at that again. I have to say, Darren, very astute for you to see that first time without a replay because you've called it absolutely spot on from what we saw in the studio here. Uh, Leicester City in their next game on Friday, uh, they'll go down and play Cardiff City there. And who with so many victories out of their games. I mean, what is it? I think it was going to be 20 out of 24, wasn't it, if they won this game? Yeah. So would that be 19 out of 24 there? Just, I mean, you've called it on, you know, throughout the afternoon into the evening now that Leicester City are going to go up there. Is it going to be one of those cases with Leicester that they clinch the championship quite early, like we've seen in the past with teams that have dominated so much? Yeah, potentially, yeah. We we looked there, particularly in the first half. Mavadidi was was sensational, yeah. as was Keenan Drewsby Hall. I thought they they were both brilliant. They they were stood out. They stood out players for, for Leicester, along with Harry Winks, who just recycles possession. He hardly ever loses it. And they're so comfortable. I thought Valt first was brilliant all game by the way even the block at the end from Freddie Ladafo I thought was outstanding he had a great game up against Wes Burns Amari Hutchinson and we spoke about this Johnny before before the match squad depth and Leicester certainly have that in abundance and I think yeah I, there's four boy there's three massive teams in terms of Leicester Southampton and Leeds and just in the middle of those is is Ipswich Town who's having a remarkable season coming up from the, the League One but I'd say Leicester will clinch this this championship rel relatively early yeah, it's gonna be really exciting to see uh, which other teams can can stake their claim to being up there and obviously Ipswich if they're not I think if you're Ipswich you're not going to focus on winning the title or anything like that when you see how good Leicester are but getting that second automatic promotion spot will be really important for them. Uh, loads more football coming up on the TalkSport network of course this week. Tomorrow Chelsea versus Crystal Palace another of your former teams Darren. What are you expecting from this game because we've seen Chelsea look a little bit uh, you know they've looked like they've, they've found their feet and then they look a bit shaky again and I know Palace aren't particularly in a great way at the moment with uh, a lot of their young players being relied on yeah it could be a possible result maybe get a draw potentially I think that's what Roy Hodgson will be telling Crystal Palace uh, players just to try and especially being at uh, Stamford Bridge as well just to try and get the crowd against Chelsea immediately and, and you know prey on, on, on the negativity around the football club at the moment I think two draws on the bounce for for Crystal Palace Man City and Brighton relatively two good results to be honest after a yeah. poor run of form that which they find themselves looking over their shoulder so I feel this is a, an opportunity that to take something from the game whether it's a draw or a victory because we know Chelsea are struggling and mentally and mentality wise when you when you are struggling if they can score an early goal Crystal Palace 
Palace, you can see the place becoming a little bit toxic and then Crystal Palace are good at seeing games out. So I, I expect this to be some, something that Roy will be taking into account that they can get something. Yeah, I've got some impressive young players there and I've got to ask you, Darren, you may have answered this on TalkSport before, but I've not heard it come out of your mouth. A lot of people saying Steve Cooper would be a great fit when Roy Hodgson's contract expires at the end of the year. You've mm. invested there at, at Crystal Palace, you know, millions on, on youth development and Steve Cooper's worked with the England setup at youth level and he's did, did amazing things with Forrest in the championship with a lot yeah. of young players. Would you be happy to see him come into the club when Roy does depart for a second time? Yeah, I certainly would. You know, I think that, that there's potentially going to have been conversations already with the powers that be and maybe Roy Hodgson as well. But just to, look, when a manager like Steve Cooper is a great manager, as you said, brings through young players. Crystal Palace have a lot of those talented young players. There may be an opportunity for Roy to go upstairs at some stage, whether it's this season or, or at the end of the season. But we know Roy loves to be on the training pitch. We know he loves to be involved. I don't like to talk about managers leaving their, their current position, but we see this happen time after time. When managers come that uh, get out of the job like Steve Cooper has at Nottingham Forest, it... it, it it tees clubs up to make decisions that they probably would have made and Roy at the end of the season's out, out of a job anyway so I think he would be a perfect fit whether that's at some stage this season or uh, early next season Yeah well with everything he's done for the club I feel that there's a nice way for it to, to be sorted out you know with no ill feeling or whatever yeah. uh, but thank you very much for uh, your commentary skills and giving us that insight on those games there of course uh, Crystal Palace playing Chelsea is a TalkSport 2 exclusive tomorrow here on Wednesday the 22nd of December if like me you've completely lost track of wherever you are with the Christmas period. Uh, former uh, Crystal Palace, Newcastle, Ipswich midfielder Darren Ambrose there alongside Joe Shannon on our live commentary as it ended Ipswich 1, Leicester 1. More games coming up tomorrow alongside that on TalkSport 2. You can go on the TalkSport app and listen to Brentford versus Wolves at 7.30 and then on TalkSport, Everton versus Manchester City as City return as club World Cup champions having missed a lot of the Christmas fuss here in the UK. And more games Games keep coming on Thursday as well. Brighton and Tottenham here on TalkSport 2 at 7.30 and Arsenal versus West Ham as well at 8.15. And then we're back in with the next round of the Championship on Fridays. Games come thick and fast. Southampton, Plymouth at 6pm here on TalkSport 2. And then we go over to TalkSport with an exclusive commentary of West Brom versus Leeds United. And then it all starts again over the weekend. But you know what? Let's deal with the football I've just told you about there first. Make sure you get the TalkSport daily podcast. You'll hear all of the fallout from all of the games today and you can get that every single day on whichever podcast app you choose to use and you can go over to TalkSport now for the final few moments of Manchester United versus Aston Villa. Nine minutes of added time, halfway through, four minutes to go there. Manchester United three, Aston Villa two. But here on your home of the EFL, it's finished Ipswich one, Leicester City one. In the championship, they simply don't get any bigger than this. Second against first as the race for promotion to the Premier League really hots up. 25 yards out, he's right of centre, he's laid it to the left of Mavadidi. Again in acres of space, Carl is it! Oh, what a goal from Mavadidi! Wonderful curler into the far corner, placed to perfection. The hard work, the high press, the intensity, absolutely brilliant to watch. Corner towards Burgess, and he's headed it over the top. He probably should have had a goal there. Still Ipswich nil, Leicester 1. Yeah, not probably, Joe, he definitely should have scored that. He will be devastated. Chaplin through the middle to Jackson, back to goal. Back to Connor Chaplin opens up. Good save to his right by Hermanson. It's all Ipswich, but like we said, they can be dangerous, Leicester. 1v1 through the middle towards Kieran Jewsbury Hall. Oh, he was brought down there, Jewsbury Hall, surely. No penalty given by the referee. I think that's a penalty, Joe. Ipswich have dominated this half. And it's caused a little bit of edginess to Leicester. One nil to Leicester, but here's Morsi for Ipswich shooting, deflecting. It's in! It's in! Ipswich are level! In stoppage time! Portman Road goes mad! And that is the definition of a captain's goal from Sam Morsi! What did we say, Joe? Get the ball on your foot and put your laces through it. But it will feel like a moral victory for Kieran McKenna's team because they have pegged back Leicester City in stoppage time. <laughs>